Imagine you did get some, like, Smash players to come on, but then their favorite stage is, like, not Smash Bros. It's like a completely different fighting <laughs> game. I was gonna make a joke <laughs> saying their favorite stage is in Smashville, since that's also one of the legal <laughs> stages in tournaments. <laughs> well, we all know their least favorite stage, the shower. <laughs> Huddle, ping! <laughs> Never gets old. Never gets old. I got Snake! Got him! You got him really good. Oh, yeah, too much. <laughs> Come on, that's not fair. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs>My favorite fighting game that has a bunch of tech and you wouldn't think it does because it's not meant to be taken seriously is the Shrek fighting game. <laughs> the you can Cube find one? so much tech for it. Huh? Is it the yeah, game? Yeah, is the GameCube it... one. Yeah. Oh, is that Shrek like... Super Slam? <laughs> yep. Yep. This match. It's the one where oh, Little Red God. Riding Hood is meta, right? If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> hey, don't forget about Gingerbread Man. He has crumpet dashing. That's the term for his wave what? dashing. <laughs> For his wave dash cancels. Kind of want to look up competitive <laughs> Shrek Slam gameplay. Although to be fair, even without a guess, like we usually do start like 30 minutes Guys, later anyway. We're making such a bad first impression here. I think she can hear us, Snake. Oh no. We just can't hear her. <laughs> oh. That was you. Why did you do that? Oh. What were you doing? It's always the sound I do, apparently. Didn't even do it? Or did he do it just then? I didn't pay attention. No, I'm just, I'm adding in my, like, you know, anime grunt. Yeah, I, I, I went, no. Everyone else had their I sound. I said, no, then he went, he did the, the, the oh. That's your, you, you call that your anime grunt, Chonadog? <laughs> Been watching a lot of, a <laughs> lot of good shows lately. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the anime grunt. I gotta come up with something like, like that for like a negative upon myself or something. Oh no, mm. I'm late. No, actually, I, I'm doing my. I, I was just. I, I, I slipped on an anime banana. I don't know what I'm saying, but. <laughs> oh no, I tripped over my waifu pillow and crashed into my <laughs> anti statue collection. That's how, that's how I say I'm late. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have a buddy that owns a waifu pillow, ironically. But it's uh, not a waifu, it's Soldier 76 from Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very cool. Very cool. I, I know someone who wants to get it, but he hasn't, like, <laughs> got the guts to yet, so I don't even know what he was trying to get. All he <laughs> says is like, ooh, I want to buy it, but it's so expensive. And at the same time, it's like, where do I put it? And it's like, it sounds so embarrassing, <laughs> or something like that. That's why I never get ones that are, like, ridiculously over the top like that, because then you can't even show them at all. Like, you want to have at least regular statues of, like, just characters. Like, uh. you could argue that, um, you know, Ivy from Soul Calibur looks a certain way, but that's how she looks. That's just her character, so... It'd be worse if it was like Batgirl doing the Jacko pose. Like that's a completely different thing, you know. <laughs> it's supposed to. It's a. Uh, isn't it like Thanos and Tifa doing the Jacko pose that's being sold? Or the something? Thanos one is so good. That, that's the one good thing about this timeline. We get Thanos <laughs> doing the Jacko pose. Jacko pose trend was very funny. Everybody doing the Jacko pose. I haven't got. I haven't commissioned. Anyways. <laughs> you know what's funny is like given like my content and like how how goofy I am. I'm shocked at how, like, normie my audience is for the most part, especially on Twitter. Because I did a drawing of Melina doing the Jacko pose, and all I got was, like, WTF comments. And I'm like, what, how do y'all not know about this? You're supposed to be, like, fighting game. Well, it's, it, well, well if you remember, you mo Mortal Kombat Jacko fans pose? don't play other fighting games, and they're the normiest fighting game fans outside of Smash. <clears throat> Excuse hey. you, most fighting game players don't play other fighting games. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's my understanding. <laughs> Remember, no, nothing's too out of the way considering I reinstalled that game on PC just to set up the hook mod so I could get a few uh, seconds of Kronika's feet. So nothing's off the table here, my <laughs> friend. Oh, wow. Well, they, well there we go. I, 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 you, you, are, you are the professional in this. But, Stop, um, Snake. We're not recording yet. We didn't meet our quota. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording. We can literally just have me say that out of context and never explain it. True. It would be kind of funny as an end credit scene. <laughs> Remember, I'm the guy who would just, like, have that entire scene. I actually... Yeah, okay, I'll look this video up I'm later. gonna watch that later. I want to see it. All I know about was when they were talking on Wooly's podcast. That's when I first learned about it. Why'd you post it ah, in the main chat? But you posted it in the callback. We were talking about this. Of course you want to post it in okay, the... Okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah, yeah. But now you gotta scroll up if you want to see the video topics. Ugh, oh, cringe. Scroll up! Um, <laughs> it's up this right above the... Jeez! <laughs> scroll up! Look, you are very aggressive right now, and it's too early for me. I'm gonna need you to dial it down. Okay, true, this true. is not a we, safe we workplace to, environment anymore. We need to wait like two hours before we can start going aggressive. It's a little too early. <laughs> good, good point. Good point. 
<laughs> Don't watch your parents walking in again like that one time when I shut felt up. actually I'll scared. <laughs> shut up. Actually, that's a very good point. I should be aggressive now because it's not too late. And when it gets like 12 a.m. or something, that's when I gotta, I gotta hone uh, it down. <laughs> oh no. I feel bad. We put like we put Babe Ruthless on such a errand. <laughs> She's just gone. Now. I know. I'm, uh, I really, I really wanted to just like call. She's her downloading back, OBS like, right now for free. She's installing <laughs> it. She's, She's probably doing it all right now in real time. I could oh. just record the desktop audio for us. The only downside there is that it's it's a bit sad when people talk over each other because you can't mute them. You can't yeah, give them the mute hammer. That's why I prefer if we can all have our own audio. <laughs> but like if it's you know it's, it's totally fine. It actually makes it easier for me to edit. It's like oh no what? mistake. Well, I can't fix it. Let's keep moving on. <laughs> makes me edit the episode faster. Anyways, <laughs> that's a nice knife. Yeah, because it's is that a new one? Yeah, it's like it's like the one Leon has in Resi Two and Four remake so it's like oh yeah Leon. hey <laughs> good Woo! yo it's all good welcome back welcome back i really hope you didn't hear anything we just said for the past 10 minutes <laughs> no no oh. i was like literally watching a youtube video maybe she's looking up a guide <laughs> it, it would have been really mm -hmm. embarrassing if we put out an yeah, episode sorry about that episode called like combat kings featuring babe ruthless and she's not in the episode <laughs> 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 It's just a strawberry. Yeah, I've been recording since like we started. We're all ready, basically. Yep. What yeah. a rookie! I started recording an hour before anyone else got on. What? Because the were grind you doing? never stops. <laughs> so well, I guess the first hour of this episode will just be <laughs> dog when what he's been doing for the past Talking hour. To himself. So this will be very interesting. <laughs> I'll have you know that when I'm not interacting or recording, I just live in complete silence. <laughs> just for the record. I've got to save these golden pipes. <laughs> I, I definitely don't talk to myself constantly and randomly burst into song when cooking. No, no. I definitely don't do that. Um, I'll, do a, I'll do a forced snake here. Welcome to the Combat Kings podcast. Hang on, I don't sound like that. <laughs> Hang on. What's this about? <laughs> but yes, Hang uh, on, welcome uh, to uh, the episode. <laughs> I, watch I don't know, you turned into Pyro Cynical, I guess. But uh, <laughs> we are the Combat Kings podcast. You know, you know, we got we got a three old faces here. But today we have a new and very special guest, the ruthless babe herself. <laughs> Babe Ruthless, welcome to the podcast. Hey, welcome very much. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. It's nice to be on here. And thanks so much, for Snake, for inviting me and getting all of this set up. Yeah, I really appreciate I it. I contribute. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <I> <laughs> so uh, I'm actually quite curious about your uh, YouTube channel, so, since you are also mainly making like fighting game content. But mm -hmm. seems to be you primarily focus on talking about like fighting game stages, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so it, I would say like the main thing I like to talk about my channel is just anything besides like the actual combat of fighting games because <laughs> nice. I'm like super casual <laughs> when it comes to fighting games. And I, I guess like I'm a lot more like aesthetically driven, I feel like oh, okay. comparatively. So um, when I first started making videos, it kind of started off being the stages because I think that was something that I really didn't see a lot of people talking about. And there were a lot of stages that I did want to talk about and kind of dive into more. But like as I've been doing this longer and longer, which I mean, it hasn't been that long. It's only been maybe a year and a half or maybe around two years. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I, I started gradually moving to talking about other dumb shit, like uh, <laughs> customizable music and fighting games. Like it's literally <laughs> things that no one else would really care about probably, but uh -huh. uh, it's just things that like, uh, it's the c type of content that like I wanna see, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of expanded to talking about things like um, not like fighting game series that have non-fighting game spinoffs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've talked about like, you know, like jukebox modes in different fighting games. So it's still like around fighting games, but now we're starting to like stretch into talking about like other dumb shit. So yeah, I, I did watch your like uh, fighting game spinoff video. So you just basically cover like all the sorts of like fighting games that go through different like phases in a sort of way, <laughs> and what other like the spinoffs they do. Yeah, that is no, so that smart one was. Finding a niche uh... like that. Sorry, my bad. Dang it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying super guy. hard. <laughs> ah, that's true. I got a drink now. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, it's really that's cool that you found a niche that no one else is covering and just went right into that. Because so many people, I think, when they're trying to start off with being a content creator, is like, I'm just going to do what everyone else is doing, and, and that doesn't work. So kudos to you for finding a niche like that. Bravo, bravo. Uh, 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just I just love talking about <clears throat> shit like that because no one else is really doing it. And yeah, when I started like looking into fighting game content more, um, there were like a lot of like, combo videos and things like that, but not things that I felt like kind of appealed to a casual like me. Mm. Um, but I, I think of another content creator that's kind of doing a similar thing is probably the main one I can think of is Guile Winquote. He goes into like really obscure topics too. So I really like his channel as well. And, and your guys' channels as well. Although, oh. true underdog, to be completely honest, I've never seen any of your videos before this. Oh. So I'm really that, sorry. That's okay, actually. That makes me feel better because I was not in your stages video and everybody else was. So I'm like, well, no, I, I hope I she doesn't neither, dislike so. me for some reason. But just as long as it's like you didn't know, that's completely better. <laughs> actually, I, I did want to talk about that because I, I really like that video of how you got like all the YouTubers coming together like talk about their favorite stages and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was actually really shocked like for some of the people who got in the video. I was like, hey, hang on a second. I, I Justin Wong and like, I, I also personally know like K's and like, oh, what, what? The legendary force snake, what? <laughs> what, what the heck? <laughs> it, was, it was a really great video to watch. That video probably was one of the trickier ones I've done just from like a mm -hmm. coordination standpoint. Mm. Actually, surprisingly, Justin Wan was the first person who agreed to be in it and sent me his video <laughs> like yeah. three days after I asked for it. Nice. Um, he must have just like recorded it really quick in his hotel room. But yeah, no, that was like a really that was a really fun collab. And he was he was really super nice about it. Like all these people, I, I pretty much just like, obviously not fourth snake and some other people in the video, but there are a lot of people that I just kind of like cold message. And I was like, Hey, I'm making this collab. Do you want to be part of it? And like, I was surprised at how many people actually said yes. So mm -hmm. it, it's pretty shocking to me. Like, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the people that actually agreed to me in my video. So <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> FGC wins. Real quick question about that video. Did you have mm -hmm. any of your collaboration partners come to you with the same stage they liked and you were like, oh, someone already did that stage. You got to pick a different one. What's your second favorite? Uh, yeah, no. Um, that happened a lot, actually. Ken stage in Alpha 2 was like a super popular one because it has yeah. all like the little references. Um, and I told them like after the first one or two people that uh, you know, I, just so you know, other people are doing this stage, like duplicates are fine, but it got to be like six people wanted to talk about that stage. Yes. And I was like, okay, maybe like think about, maybe you guys can think about picking something else. So, um, also Moonlight Wilderness in Tekken 5 was a yep. really popular yep. one too. I, I find like, I find it very interesting that the majority of people who submitted their answers like they gave their reasonings as to why they liked the stage but I f in my personal opinion while watching the video is a lot of people had a lot of nostalgia for their favorites and that's like one of the big reasons why they picked it and it just happened like like you said like the kent stage was quite a lot of people like um had nostalgia for that one too so i think that was picked quite a lot too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, a absolutely. Like, I, I feel like nostalgia was one of the main drivers. Um, but you did have people like Theory Fighter who were picking uh, certain stages actually for more for like gameplay reasons. So it was really cool to kind of see the the different variety and what people were choosing. I mean, I, you know, I pretty much told them like whatever you want, you know, just for whatever reason you like, you know, feel free to just mm -hmm. talk about it. Um, but yeah, for me, my my pick was pretty much just like aesthetically driven and also mm, yeah. a little bit of nostalgia as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What what so about you guys? Astaroth. If you could, if you were in my video now, what video would, uh, what stage would you choose? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> putting us on the spot. You know, the, the thing that sucks is I have the answer of the game, but I don't have the answer of the stage in my head as of right now. So I have to like... Hmm. think about this so dog you take over for now i'm just gonna like i'm a torn here. between yeah i'm torn between two different ideas because i didn't see anybody mention bloody roar so i thought about doing a bloody roar stage just because i loved that game's soundtrack and a lot of the stages are very different and iconic to me but i'm also very partial to the uh soul nato and deadly alliance because as you're fighting oh. it's there to the side and all the souls are constantly getting pulled into it and flying past you as you're fighting and that Soul Nato is the only light source in the stage. So it's kind of really interesting and, and like dim and creepy, but also really mystical. And uh, it's one of those things that even though I prefer the um, competitiveness of 2D Mortal Kombat, 
I really miss getting to walk around the stages in the 3D Mortal Kombat, which you can't do anymore. Oh. You only get that one perspective. Makes me a bit sad. <laughs> but yeah, I love Bloody Roar. Yeah. <laughs> no, those those are really good uh, picks. Solnado is a really good one, and the, the palace is really huge. Uh, for whatever reason, like, no Bloody Roar stages are coming into my mind. I'm wondering if it's like maybe it just didn't. Like, the, the game's aesthetic didn't really hit me. <laughs> for me, it's the music, and then I think of the music first, then the stages. So, for example, there's, like, a cold storage oh. stage where you fight inside of a freezer, and it's all purple, and the the ground has mist floating off of it, like a foot off the ground. And the music's like... Bam, dam, 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 dam. It sounds like an alien spaceship, but you're inside of it. It's, it's so sick. <laughs> Is that Bloody Roar 2? 3. <laughs> 3, sorry. I'm a huge oh, okay. fan for the original 3. They remade three like twice, right? There was Bloody Roar, Primal Fury, and Bloody Roar some oh three extreme, maybe? I forget. But I'm I'm very partial to the original because it had the best character designs and the voice acting was still cheesy and corny. I hate it when it got <laughs> serious and they hired like actual professional voice actors. <laughs> Lame. Don't want that. <laughs> All my goofy voices. Yeah, no, Bloody but, Roar yeah. Two is the one I, I played the most, but definitely I, I would want to check out the other ones as well. Yeah. What about oh, you? Oh Sonic? man. Okay, sorry. Go oh, no, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you, can, you can say, well, oh, man. So I, I'm, just, I'm just Googling, like, Bloody Roar 3 stages, and, like, some of them are just, like, symmetrical, so not that interesting. But there was the Dinosaur Museum was pretty cool in Bloody Roar 3 because there's, like, these giant animatronics of dinosaurs in the background making noise and always moving. Nice. And uh, as a kid, I thought they were alive and actually, like, giant dinosaurs watching us fight. And I was like, let's go. And you can like break the wall of the stage and send the opponent flying into like the pen where the dinosaurs are. <laughs> and I always assumed they were eaten off camera. But they're not because it's just, you know, animatronics. Oh, but the city skyscraper stage is also really cool because you're on top of a roof and you're, there's always buildings around you. <laughs> oh. Hard to so pick cool. one. It's, it's, this actually <laughs> is quite a hard, like, um, hard topic because it's like there's so many stages. So it's like, it's really hard to just pick one of your favorites too so yeah i, I could see mm -hmm. maybe some people would go gravitate towards like a lot of the same ones because everyone many people have the same feeling towards that and stuff yeah, i'm surprised like more people pick didn't favorite pick favorite song oh. <laughs> yes. oh sorry go ahead i keep, <laughs> no, <laughs> I keep talking over you sorry it's just you too so no, many times <laughs> you're allowed to talk over me you are the guest but i was gonna say it's like um I thought everybody was going to pick, like, Fetus of God or whatever that stage is called in Darkstalkers. Uh, it's just so spooky and so, like, disturbing. And the name alone is, mentioned. like... It was mentioned. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I would have thought, like, ten people would have picked that one because it's what jumps out to me, like, as... What's a memorable stage? <laughs> that one. Oh, like a really normal one, like, Guile Earthfield. Because Street Fighter 2 <laughs> and, and the Guile theme. Yes. <laughs> um, sometimes simple is the answer so I suspect you're going to go for either yeah, Reptiles no. Lur MK4 or Reptiles Lur MK Armageddon no jeez <laughs> I actually associate the Deadpool more with Reptile I'll be honest since that's like only shows yeah. up one time but but no then have I, I got a video <laughs> for you <laughs> Babe Ruth's channel I <laughs> oh yeah! Oh wow! I, I remember. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did I did do about... one in the Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got. I got to check that one out. Um, my so my answer is the one that I'm gonna shock that like nobody talked about is the game um, Super Smash Bros. <laughs> it's not Cause... a fighting game. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that game I feel like had a lot of great like um, stages, especially because that also had a lot of great stage transitions. Where it's like you have stages that like you go from like point A to point B to point C, like the Delfino Plaza or like the F Zero racing tracks and stuff like that. And I've had great memories like playing through a lot of those stages. Before this podcast, I think I was going to put, like, Final Destination, one of those, just because I felt like the background is so, oh, super beautiful, especially in, like, the Brawl era games. Uh, the, the Wii one, I, I especially like that one. But uh, kind of just, like, look through, and I'm like, yeah, I think uh, maybe this is a hot t And this is just me coming up on the spot. I feel like if I had more time, I, I might change it or something. But my, my pick for now is uh, Hyrule Temple. <laughs> Because this one is a classic. It's quite like um, you see it quite often with like it's it's also very casual. I'm not like trying to pick a stage that's like super competitive and smash and stuff. And like I I like when a stage has like a lot of different parts that you can go on and fight. And I've also had very very 
uh, many fun memories with my friends back when we were kids, like going down to like the very bottom of the stage and just like knocking the opponent and they'll just like da -da 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 bounce up there and like they can't die. And also even like a couple years ago when it came back to Ultimate, just played this game with like eight people and it becomes really hectic and very fun and I have fond memories with this one and I, and I just enjoy it in general. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I tried to get uh, some Smash Bros folks to actually be part of the collaboration, not to oh. name any names, but I'm, I'm surprised no one picked Smash either. Like I also really liked Hyrule Temple and then nowadays when I play uh, Snake, I just kind of like camp at the bottom part and I shoot anybody that's like coming up and then that way they all have to come down to me like at that little bottom platform, you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I did the very toxic meta, I think with Snake, which is go to the very bottom and just like, I don't know, throw grenades, throw grenades, throw like mines, <laughs> set the mines, get the rocket. And when somebody comes over, bye bye, up B all the way to the top right of the stage. <laughs> yes, I was one of those little brats. <laughs> Imagine you did get some like Smash players to come on but then their favorite stage is like not Smash Bros. It's like a completely different fighting <laughs> game. Like, that would be what's funny. your favorite fighting game stage? Uh, Ken's stage in Alpha Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bunch I mean, of like famous awesome. Smash players. That would have been awesome. It would have shown that Smash Bros. players are actually playing other games. <laughs> Cultured. I was gonna make a joke saying their favorite stage is the what was it Animal Crossing like second stage or something. Oh, Smashville. That's what it's called. Yeah, since that's also one of the legal <laughs> stages in tournaments. <laughs> Oh, I see. Well, we all know their least favorite stage, the shower. <laughs> Never gets old. Never gets the old. The god snake got him. You got him really good. Oh, yeah, too much. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's not fair. <laughs> what? <laughs> when we went to Evo one year, they finally had Smash Bros. And we had to make the joke, we're like, guys, even if it doesn't stink in that section, we gotta say it does. Like, everyone's just gotta, as a group, say how stinky it was in the Smash Player section. <laughs> I do like Smash Bros. I learned to actually finally play it. I cheat, though. I use Men Men, so I'm, I'm a big old cheater. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are a cheater. Yep. <laughs> you can't the, put a ramen bowl on a character's head and expect me not to play her. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um... Babe Ruthless uh, content is very fun. I, I enjoy like learning things while watching your content, being like, "Oh, that's very interesting to know about stages that you know we didn't get to know before and stuff." And it's always very entertaining to learn. Learn. Th I personally like watching videos and also coming out learning some new things too. And I think your content does that. Mm -hmm. oh, well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, it's literally just me rambling about things that I find interesting, but. I don't know, I guess I, I was surprised that other people also found it interesting as well. Like, mm -hmm. um, actually, when I first started off, I thought maybe just my close friends would watch the videos. And I, I really wasn't expecting it to blow up the way it did. I mean, not to say like I have like, you know, hundreds of like thousands of subscribers or anything, but it's it's way more than I ever thought I would mm -hmm. ever have. So it's pretty nuts. Did you have to avoid any copyright strikes for that video, like for the music, or no? Did it go pretty well because it's video game music? Um, no. For the collab video, um, I think it went pretty well. There was uh, some Mortal Kombat music that got a copyright strike. Really? Um, but I just changed. Yeah. yeah uh, ah, but I'm it wasn't sorry. Really an I issue, apologize. So I just changed <laughs> it out. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> there you oh, go. I think. I think the main theme actually is copyrighted, from what I recall. The but main it's, it's theme. Besides that, like stuff from the original trilogy, uh, flags copyright. Because I remember when I tried um, doing one big video that was all my MK critiques in one, and that was uh, getting flags on copyright because the MK9 music is largely just taken from one to three, and so it was like, oh, I, I'm not going to re-render this eight-hour video again. Fuck this! <laughs> I'm just going to give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Interesting. I didn't know the original trilogy would copyright claim. I gotta be careful. I think it's because Warner Bros. You know, Warner Music Group and whatnot. Yes. Ah. Which is weird because like MKX and yeah. Eleven aren't. I, I guess because M MKX and Eleven soundtracks are kind of dog shit, so they don't think anyone's going to bother. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not worth, it's not worth protecting at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just don't touch. Just don't touch the newest game soundtrack because that's actually pretty good. I like using that in my videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The only the only yeah. upside to MK11 soundtrack was the Lin Kuei stage background, not because it's good, but because it works well for like 
barely there background music for my guides and stuff because you don't want the music to be too distracting mm. but mm. you want it to be there so it was good for that but my goodness what a, what a terrible track record like two <laughs> games straight of just terrible music <laughs> <sighs> I, I think i only remember the not even really but the shirai rayu temple soundtrack because i used it for when the force snake collabed in my video so i had to look that up and just use it I'm like, okay whatever I don't remember. I don't even remember what it sounds like. <laughs> Tournament was good because it was just like uh, a new rendition of Techno Syndrome. <laughs> so it's just, it's, yeah. it's just it? yeah. It's, it's, so it's good by default, but aside from that, uh, not very great soundtrack. I think I don't think they even did like classic remixes or anything for the returning stages. Mm-hmm. Oh, and MK11. Mm. They might have done, but I, I don't. I don't think mm. they did. Huh? Because uh, yeah, I noticed that in Mortal Kombat One, where mm. like. Only like one of the returning stages actually has the like a remix of the original soundtrack. So like the Wushi Academy, the um, the the pyramid and like the flesh pits all don't have the original soundtracks. Like they're not remixes. Mm. It's only the Living Forest that got the remix, which is Darn. great because the Living Forms the Living Forest is a great soundtrack. Yeah, no, I I would say there's a there's a lot better music in Mortal Kombat 1. I would say Cage Mansion is probably my favorite from this game. It's hot to Absolutely. Talk. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, in 11, obviously, like, the, the Fire Garden stage, that was pretty peak for me. But I would say the okay. 3D era actually has the best music for me. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You choose arcade mode. That's why we need the jukebox. Choose arcade Dang mode, and then, True. and then Deadly Lights' character selects <clears throat> theme starts and gone. Mm. How 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 is it legal for something for music to be this good? You can't do that. You can't just bring this on us out of nowhere. But they did. Yep, yep. Which one was is it Deadly Alliance or Deception that had the beach? Uh Deception. Yin Yang Island. Deception. Yeah. The one that like yeah, goes Deception. from like Earth Realm to Outworld, like like God damn it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that yeah, one a lot. Yeah, the one that flashes back and forth, yeah. That that beach Gives theme a... does not fit MK, but I just really like that one. I'm like, this is such a happy and cheery music. <laughs> yeah, the steel drums really does it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I totally agree. Mortal Kombat like desperately need, like desperately needs that jukebox mode more than any other fighting game series that's out there. Like, I would love to be able to go in and customize all the music on like Mortal Kombat One stages, but yeah. they just had like no ability to do that ever, which. It's like a shame, honestly. Oh, do you think it's like a copyright thing as to why they can't do it? Um, I I don't think they're ever gonna probably do it. Um, probably just because no one's asking for it. Like, it's not really a thing that devs really necessarily want to go out of their way to build. It, but that's just like my theory on it. That is true. Darn. It's not like, Massive not like Mortal Kombat L. It. Well, I'm still waiting for the Mortal Kombat dating sim, so we'll wait for that to come out before I worry about a Mortal Kombat jukebox. True. Who would, True. Who would you date, Underdog? Who would you date? Everyone. <laughs> Nobody's well, safe. Who would you date first? Imagine the is, replay value. That is true. You need the content. You're going to have to date everybody to make content for the game. True. And they can make it like a world tour in Street Fighter where you get texts from them too randomly. So Scorpion just randomly texting you, but he's like bad at it. <laughs> you gotta give Scorpion like 10 teddy bears until he like gets one affection for your level or something. I, 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 adore the idea. I feel like dating Scorpion would be so hard because he'd be breaking down about his dead family. <laughs> yeah, you'd be his therapist basically. You'd be helping him get over True. his trauma. <laughs> I, I love the idea of, of Dog making videos on his channel that are dating sim guides. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Best route, best ending. Here's how to win over Sub-Zero. The greatest to, romance option in Mortal fun. Kombat, the worst romance option in Mortal Kombat, the weirdest romance how option to, in Mortal Kombat. How to fumble bad in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> How did I fumble Melina? She's the easiest romance in the game. <laughs> oh. I would uh yeah. I would probably date Sub Zero from Mortal Kombat One, Behan. <laughs> Ooh, no, I, can I, Good I can fix him. I can fix him. I can fix him. I do love um so even though I'm not a huge fan of AI, the one cool thing about the AI voices is all the funny memes people have done with the character intros and whatnot. Uh-huh. And this one guy has a running joke where like Serena and Bihan are always casually flirting, but Bihan's like pretending not to have any of it. Like he's so Sundare. And it's cracking <laughs> oh, me up. Oh 
I that just like makes that. Serena like him more because she's a demon. So she finds like cold hearted, tough guys like super hot. <laughs> so I love that running joke. I'm glad that you understand that Bihan has depth, BR, unlike yes. uh, Netherrealm that seems to think he's just generic <laughs> evil guy when he's not supposed to be. Yeah, Do you no, think that Sub Zero. Uh, he'd be. Sorry, oh, sorry go ahead. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> Mine's oh. just a joke, so I can wait. <clears throat> oh, okay. No, I was just gonna say that. Uh, yeah, no, Bihan would be really great, but he would just send you like snowman emojis, and he'd give you one-word answers. But then gradually, this is just like my head camp, but Gradually, he'd start opening up to you. You're slowly <laughs> melting his heart. <laughs> That's right. You're melting his heart. He's, he's your Chinese ninja you... warrior with his heart so cold. <laughs> he is. <laughs> A question: Would you say it's original Bihan or like like current Bihan? You, you like you like. Uh, probably current behind for sure. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yes. A lot of people like like his uh, personality and like his, like the way he acts and stuff. From what I'm seeing, <laughs> I yeah, bet if you the... get his like romance all the way up, you can see his skull collection because you know he keeps them. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, the yeah, like the predator shape yeah. and predator too. <laughs> and he's like, no, he stole that from me. <laughs> that was my thing. <laughs> Yeah, no, the old one, the noob Cybot, he doesn't have too much going on person personality-wise from what I've seen. And funny that you mentioned skull collection, because not real skulls, but I, I do have a small skull collection of, like, <laughs> fake skulls. Cool! Like Soulmates. So me, Soulmates me and, like, meant to be. We can, we can bond over that together. <laughs> there you go. Be like, my skull is better than your skull, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do I do like the idea though of well one when you're giving gifts you can just like fatality someone and then give their skull to Bihan it's like oh this is this is fantastic <laughs> you you got such great craftsmanship the way you didn't scratch up the skull while taking all the flesh off but also I, I adore the idea of romancing like, MK11 noob Cybot and getting like the romance dialogue from him with that voice please will you go after <laughs> me it would mean the world to me. <laughs> I've never felt such compassion in life. <laughs> the Dr. Claw so voice. <laughs> yes. Imagine you have to like get him, you have to like trick him into accidentally becoming Noob Cybot just to date Noob Cybot. There's like meta layers to it. <laughs> like, you know, Bihan, yeah. I think you should actually, uh, you know, do what they say and enjoy in Quan Chi gets no, turned no, into... The trick is, <laughs> go to the evil side. you have to keep your romance levels with Scorpion and Bihan at equal levels, but then get it just a bit higher for Bihan so that Scorpion gets a angry and jealous and murders him and he becomes Noob Cybot. <laughs> <laughs> the most advanced dating sim ever. <laughs> you all know about the Rick and Morty, like, butter robot meme, right? Yes. Where it's like, what is my purpose? And it's like, you pass butter. And he's like, oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah. um, well, I only bring it up because BR mentioned like how the only thing that old Bihan had going for him was like becoming Noob Cybot, and everyone like prefers that more. So I, that could totally be a meme. It's like Bihan being like, what is my purpose? And the creators are like, you become Noob Cybot, kid. And he's like, oh my god. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like nobody likes me as Sub Zero. <laughs> I've always got to become Noob Cybot. He either has to okay. become Noob Cybot, or he just gets killed off, and then in the movies and never brought up again. Who do you guys think would be the hardest character to romance? Because I have my idea, but I'm curious y'all's thoughts. Who's the hardest partner to romance in my Mortal Kombat mm. dating sim? Not mine, but like just mm. in, in, like if it happened. I guess if we're going with like strictly power mm. levels, maybe Shao Kahn. It's like you oh, want to I romance Shao that. Kahn, you well, must literally conquer an entire realm well, to even start the dates yeah, or something. With, with, Shao, with Shao Kahn, it's like there's, there's two endings for it. There's the good end, where you become his uh, his his partner, like a like a twin Dell type. All this, the bad end, where you're just part of his harem. You're the one who crawls out <laughs> in, the his, in his victory pose and like lights onto his leg. Victory. That's you, and it's like that's the bad end. Uh, to be fair, for some people, they might like that. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I think Shang Sun, just because he would probably like look down on me, and he would like. You know, he would like to, he would probably degrade you, and some people would be into that. But uh, I'd have to compete for his affection with Quan Chi, his, his favorite. Fav oh, true. Quan Chi. Very true. I was thinking, like, is he going to, like, somehow betray you in this, like, uh, theoretical relationship, and you have to, like, somehow avoid that or something, mm -hmm. make the right Ooh. choices, or he just betrays you? But that Quan Chi There'd be so many point. ways. I know, I know who. There'd be. be so many ways to die by accident trying to date Shang Tsung. Like, if he saw any chance to, like, use you, he absolutely would. That'd be tough. <laughs> I know who'd be the hardest. Kronika. 
Okay. If you make one mistake, she resets oh. the timeline. You have to start over again. <laughs> <laughs> Deletes your save file. The golden balance can. is ruined. We, we're, we're starting over again. Uh, <laughs> what are you, a speedrunner, Chronico? What the hell? <laughs> and if by the end you fail to date anybody, then you get Baraka. <laughs> That's the bad end. He's like, I'll love you. <laughs> well, I was thinking Baraka that, like, the bad end? <laughs> he's the I bad mean, end. He's yeah. No, Meat. I mean, Melina, Meat's Mel the bad Baraka's end. Baraka's loyal. He's always, always looking out for Melina in the older games. I, I think he'd make a, a good partner. That's true. Uh, he cares and, for and, his and, own he, he, uh, race. He has, he has a, a wife and kid in M1K The Dead, the but he did, he did have that. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Barak is actually one of the better choices, shockingly enough. Fair enough. <laughs> it depends if it's before MK1 or, like, you know, current, like, M1K Baraka. Like, the, I think there's I two, so. like, different, like, situations, you know? <laughs> Bo Rai Cho would be the bad end, then, or meat, because they're both gross oh, God. And, and disgusting. <laughs> but, but, I oh. think the hardest person to romance would be Sindel. Difficult? Because she's... Yeah, I think Sindel would be tough. Because she's like a queen. She's above you. But also, like, her husband passed, so maybe she doesn't want to date anybody. She's like, no, and no one will ever like, be King Jared. Is this like regular Sindel, mind control Sindel, revived back to normal Sindel, <laughs> twin Del from MK11, or like M1K Sindel, you know? Like... Well, you, you see, Sonic, that's has, the like, beauty of a Mortal crisis. Kombat dating sim, is you could try to include all of them somehow. And, like, how you <laughs> could... Revenant Sindo, I just thought of that one, too. <laughs> like, how, how do you like your, your partner, you know? <laughs> it, it, the story, the story, you want I'm good Bihan? Do, do you want new Saibot Bihan? The, the story takes place, like, after the revelation of the multiverse, and so, like, all these different universes and timelines are, are open to you. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> True. That could, that, that's how it could work. That's how they'll explain and, it. And the then, then it's like, well, now you can date every... Here's the, here's the DLC. We can... <laughs> We can date Cole Young if you want, and it's like when you look at that man who. Won. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, like, look, look, shit talk, shit talk, Cole all you want, but I mean, Lewis Town is very handsome. Yeah. Like that Ooh. actor is oh, yeah. genuinely very handsome. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate everyone in that movie being attractive, and also Kano <laughs> being super funny. I never thought I'd see any Mortal Kombat medium where Kano was my favorite character. So, kudos. Excited for the sequel. <laughs> Which is so, currently still called Mortal Kombat 2, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's very confusing. What are they going to call the next Mortal Kombat game? Like, they already called it Mortal Kombat 1 now, so... Because technically that name wasn't taken. The original is just called Mortal Kombat, but it's still confusing. Mm -hmm. um, but what are they going to... They can't call the sequel Mortal Kombat 2. But anyway, we should probably move on to our, our topic number two. <laughs> Speaking of twos. True, Sonic. true. Lovely transition true. there. This is a very I funny tried. topic, but basically we wanted to kind of talk about, like what's been going on with like Tekken recently because um actually Bay Ruthless do you know what's been like going on with Tekken recently um is this I, I would say I'm like I'm somewhat aware of what's going on is it the issue with the balance patches uh, it's a new patch yeah, yeah 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 basically uh TLDR it's like I think there's been a giant spike in hating Tekken after, like, the last <laughs> patch that came out, basically. Oh, by the way, look, mm -hmm. personally, like, I love I loved the new game Tekken. I'm having a great time with it, but I just had to make this joke. How does it feel, Tekken fans? Hmm? Yeah. How does it feel? Like, I... What's your <laughs> god crumble to the ground? How does it feel, Tekken? With the battle How does it pass? feel to be a bit <laughs> But, but Mortal Kombat 1 has these bad th Yeah, well, Mortal Kombat 1 doesn't have a battle pass. Hmm. <laughs> At least that doesn't exist. <laughs> but yeah, there, um, that's, that is like the one, like, um, other than the patch, which has a lot of issues with, like, the characters and how stage interactions go, the battle pass that recently got added into Tekken, right. I think, is big topic that many people have been, like, um, mentioning. <laughs> what, what do you guys think about that part? Yeah, I, I don't really get the hate for it because the game is still really new and I think they're still figuring out kind of what's going to work best for Tekken. Um, and honestly, I'm so... Like, I feel like my opinion is that I'm such a casual that I don't really notice, like, the issues beyond the battle pass. And, um, well, personally, I, I also bought the battle pass. So ah. <laughs> I can't really say shit. <laughs> I'm really... No. <laughs> I keep buying into those microtransactions. I'm a big Genshin player, oh, so no. I can't really say uh, anything because I keep buying the Genshin for, Battle Pass. The Force Snake, you can relate, I'm sure. Yeah, I play like three, four gacha games. And one of those is not one fair. One of those is Mortal Kombat, so. <laughs> and yet I'm I'm the one that gets all the shill allegations. <laughs> Damn, it's not fair. <laughs> I never spent money on it, the, except uh, that one time the game tricked me. 
<laughs> that's the only time I spent money on it. Yeah, that's why I appreciate Sonic taking it off me there for a little bit. Um, yeah, the balance update what? for Tekken. The only annoying thing is that um, with Tekken oh, 8, yeah, the balance I felt like update, you were going to make that joke, weren't you? <laughs> what? The Tekken joke? No, I was scared. <laughs> Too scared, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> because everyone just thinks that I'm dogging on. I love Tekken; it's like my favorite. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, the, with Tekken uh, Eight, instead of uh, hmm? uh, you go ahead. Sorry, you go ahead. Say it. Spit it out. What do you <laughs> okay, want? Okay, I was just gonna talk about the battle pass because basically, <laughs> okay. um, the general consensus as to what I hear about like when complaining about battle passes is, is like when a game has a battle pass, it's for, for people, it's usually only okay if the game is free. So, like, Fortnite mm -hmm. or when Overwatch became free, when it had a battle pass, people were like, fine, because the game is free, they need to find a way to make money, so fair enough. But when but the complaint starts when it's a $70 game and they're still charging you to do a battle pass. That's when people start to be annoyed with the system and how they're implementing that. Um, and that's one reason I see a lot of complaints. The big complaint that I see about the Tekken Battle Pass, and I would agree with this, is um, content's kind of shit in the Battle Pass. <laughs> like what you get in the Battle Pass. <laughs> I haven't seen the paid for one. I've seen the free one, and I was like, this is all just stuff from Tekken 7. Like like That's... a majority of it. I was like, most of this is just stuff in Tekken 7. And they say, I'm pretty sure my buddy told me that the Tekken 8 developers did say, yes, it looks like Tekken 7, but it was all actually like remade for Tekken 8. It's not just copy and paste it over. Uh -huh. I hope that's true, because some of those uh, costumes in the store have me a little bit sus, because they're from Tekken 7, and the game already has Tekken 7 outfits for every character for like one of their defaults. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder if those are already done. But anyway, um, yeah, what, what do you think about the Battle Pass? VR, because you said you already got it. Was there stuff in there that looks kind of cool? Yeah, I haven't seen it, no, the, paid I, one. I, the main thing I wanted was the the karate gi, which I think is like the very last item, yeah, yeah, and because I wanted to, on. I wanted to put Reina in like a Heihachi like, style. <laughs> oh, like, that was my, good that was point. my goal. <laughs> true, That's a good true. point. But I actually, I would love for them. Oh, go oh, sorry, ahead. You, you go. Sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say, like, uh, they like if they're bringing in assets from previous games like i would love to see some shit from coming from tekken 4 like that would be mm -hmm. my oh, yeah. ultimate one what had me laughing a little bit was in the tekken store they recently added yoshimitsu's costume from tekken tag 2 yeah. which is cool it's a great costume yes. but what had me dying laughing was the description the text said like um purchase yoshimitsu's classic costume huh <laughs> That's two games ago. <laughs> what do you mean? To, to, be, to, to, be, to be it's fair, one of his dog, most recent looks. That, that was like twelve years ago. Tech that is true. Very These Tekken games releases. take a long time yeah. to get sequels. Yeah, that there, is there true. There are a couple of costumes from Four because <clears> they've got Xiaoyu's dress and Jin's hoodie. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's in the battle yep. pass or anything, but those are in the game now. The, that, that's not battle pass. You buy it in the game, basically. Uh, it's like in a shop. Yeah, there, and that's all that I things. want too. I want. Mm. I just want the classic costumes. Is what I'm saying. Sorry. Yeah, 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 it's like, the, the classic costumes are like, you can buy them in the shop, which is what mm -hmm. most people, fans, like, want. And the Battle Pass, uh, I did say this a couple episodes ago, I was like, you know, I really like Tekken's customiz Tekken 8's customization, but man, I want more customization for, like, all characters and stuff, and that's what the Battle Pass is giving. Um, and <laughs> for, me, for me, the only thing I want in the Battle Pass are, like, the shorts, because there's no way you can, like really fine customizations that shows like the legs more and every everything is just like long pants or like short pants but you can barely get any legs for like any of the characters and finally there is one and it's in the battle pass i'm like damn it, i don't i don't want to, <laughs> i don't want to farm for like level 10 just to get that one cost like uh, customization <laughs> if you want those legs you got to work for them sonic you got to grind <laughs> damn it <laughs> it's a new, it's a new but kind I think of like day the you funniest hail a cab. thing in the battle pass <laughs> that's been like kind of railing the, the Tekken community is uh <clears throat> How are we feeling about the ball? Have you guys like heard about Tekken the ball? ball? No. That's not a Tekken ball, by the way. That's a customization item. Oh. That's oh, the. Okay. Can you use it as a weapon? Is it like one of those ones you can actually like use, like in Tag Two? I don't think it's a weapon, or? but it's just that's that's how it looks like in the game. Oh, I gotta see it. Whoops. Yeah, I've seen people be screen. really creative with the white ball, though. So like, I guess that <laughs> oh. <laughs> doesn't really bother me. Like, people go wild with it. I think it's really funny. Just like. Because the people were saying, like, hang on, I can own, open my 3D program and just click on the sphere, and I'm done. 
<laughs> that's literally yep. what it looks like. And so it's kind of, it's kind of become like a super <laughs> meme. Just unlock <laughs> the ball. <laughs> that is really funny, dude. That was actually, uh, I mean, you guys posted this, I think, or maybe I did, but I think you guys did. There was a problem of like, everyone's trying to cheat in Tekken 8. There's so many ways you can cheat in Ranked. And one of them was to have your custom character just be one of the items oh. that you can equip and make <laughs> oh, it bigger than your character so they can't actually see anything. <laughs> you just get free mix-ups and stuff. And that was one of the big problems. So unless they fix that, I could be a giant sphere and <laughs> just attack my opponent oh! and they'll know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, Soul Calibur Six did that too. Like you're fighting a giant triangle. <laughs> yeah, no, my buddy did that. I told them the story, but you haven't heard it, so I'll tell it again. I was playing Soul Calibur with my friends, and one of our buddies is like just the biggest troll, and he did a custom character. He's playing as Astaroth. He looked like a giant purple turtle shell. He was like a grape man, so you couldn't see the character. Yeah, I kept missing my my high attacks. He kept like barely dodging my high attacks, and I'm like, how is this happening? But you know how in Soul Calibur, when you win the round, sometimes it breaks their items or their clothes. So it broke the giant turtle shell. Turns out he made his Astaroth character as short as physically possible. So that's why I kept missing. But you couldn't tell because the turtle shell. And I was like, oh, you are a cheater. You're a big old <laughs> cheater. You were tiny this whole time. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you were allowed to use custom characters and ranked for Soul Calibur. It was ridiculously unfair. You could take Astaroth and make him short. So he lost all the weaknesses that Astaroth normally has for being a big body. So that was hilarious. Um, but also, since we're talking about the cheating, did y'all see the screenshot tech? You, you, you talked about it, but I have, no, I have not heard about this. Yeah. You, you got to no. explain this. So in Tekken 8, for some reason, if you just mash the screenshot button, it makes the game lag. So it can cause your opponent to like drop their combos or something. So if you get launched, you can just start mashing the take screenshot button. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes the game start to lag, <laughs> and it can like make them drop the combo. It's like the new shitty tech that you can do. Even, to be a even with like the opponent. Degenerate. <laughs> yes, wow. that's why it's good because that messes up the opponent. <laughs> oh, it's, oh like, it's a dip switch, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's like like the digital version. Yeah, of it's having, like, crazy. A, it's like you're fighting someone, and then every time the opponent goes to swing, you got a friend just off to the side with a, a, a flash photography camera, just like ching, every time that they go to hit you, and they're like, oh, oh, which so you get a free hit because you see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, I At finally least they found fixed it. the pluggers. I was oh. scrolling through Twitter just trying to find this one image that somebody made, basically. Okay, I posted here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> just I ball. love Oscar, so this makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> just looking for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to close out to close out on the battle pass like conversation because then we can talk about like the gameplay stuff that happened. Um, yeah, it there is one kind of shady, but then also one kind of nice thing about the battle pass. The shady thing about the battle pass is we talked about this a couple episodes ago. It's like if you want to get a skin in Tekken right now, it's four hundred Tekken coins. Okay, great. Let me just buy four hundred. Up, oh, you can only spend five hundred Tekken coins. Though that means you pay a little extra just to get like a skin. It's kind of annoying, but oh well, you still got, it's just, it's just like paying an extra 100 coins, right? What about the Tekken Battle Pass then? 600. So you have what? to spend a thousand Tekken coins if you want to get the Battle Pass. <laughs> oh, no. Which, oh, which is a little, no. mm, it's like, okay, you can think of it this way, a Battle Pass plus a skin, right? That's 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 a thousand like uh, Tekken coins. Yeah, true. But that, that is the, a little bit of annoying thing that I've been hearing, well, kind of annoying thing. The nice thing is, and I think this is one thing that I'll be like, okay, not a bad job, Tekken Battle Pass. In fact, I think this might be one of the reasons why BR, you got it. If you finish the Battle Pass, because you can get Tekken coins in the Battle Pass if you mm -hmm. bought the premium oh. one. If oh, you finish cool. the Battle Pass, you get back your money. Yeah, that, that's what's, ex oh. that's what's expected yeah. with Battle Passes is you get back the money you spent and a bit more to, so you can just get the next one as well. Oh, I didn't know about that. That's like the yeah. it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of industry oh. standard, but... Forcing you to to pay extra to get access to it. Oh, like, this is like Xbox 360 yeah. Microsoft points shit. I, I'm not down for that. Yeah, I, I don't know what you're say, talking like... about, Snake. <laughs> for the price of <laughs> one say, Mortal like... Kombat one costume, you can get a <laughs> battle pass. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you put it that way, maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Br? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was gonna say like Street Fighter. Street Fighter Six is like doing that too with their extra skins, and then like Brahalla does it in a really fucked up way, where you have to spend oh. like fifty dollars to get four skins. So like I'm really hoping this isn't 
like an industry standard moving forward but yeah. it kind of looks like this is becoming the new thing which is really scummy i do have yeah. a quote but I'll, I'll look up the quote and I'll, but you guys keep chatting because it's like it kind of relates to this basically well i was gonna say that's the scary part about it is like not just that one game's doing it but the fact that if it does well you know that every other fighting game company is like did the fans like it were they okay with it <laughs> Because then we're going to do it. <laughs> it's also kind of- like, you know NetherRealm or WB is looking at that battle pass like, why didn't we think of that? Yeah, if it does well, like, why did Jimmy, you- we're putting that in. Like, you think they <laughs> to be fair, they were it. proud in the combat cast. They were like, guys, no battle passes. Okay, they literally said that. So that is one <laughs> advantage they have on this. Every every like bad thing they've done, this is one thing that they actually got Right, and I say that, but they still did it in the Suicide Squad game. But that's that's Warner Brothers, not NRS. So they're like, True. we don't have it in our game, guys. So that's like literally one thing that they got that could be good compared to yes. the other companies. <laughs> and don't okay, get me I wrong, got- I do think the price of the DLC costumes for MK1 is ridiculous. Oh yeah. But ironically enough, I do think that Street Fighter Six and Tekken Eight still have that game beat in terms of how much content there is to pay for that that's DLC. Like, you know what I mean? So for Street Fighter VI, you have the Ninja Turtle outfits that are over a hundred dollars just to get those. Yeah. You have $15. all the costume threes, which are over a hundred bucks if you want to get every one of those. And there's no way to bulk buy them for like a, a reduced amount or anything. So like you, you'd have to do that. And then they're adding the Monster Hunter one, which you know is going to also be probably really expensive, unless they learned. Maybe they learned. But that's Street I don't think they have two hundred plus dollars worth of content in Mortal Kombat one yet, unless you're just dumb and buy stuff that's already in the game, which they do give you the option to do that, it's which very is possible. kind of scummy. Yeah, I mean, but otherwise, if it's just like only stuff that you have to buy, I think MK One's kind of on the low end. Um, it depends on how you look at it. For me, Street Fighter Six <laughs> is like, it's it's like it's scummy, it's annoying. Fifteen dollars Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle costumes, but at the same time, it's like, even I look at the Battle Pass Street Fighter Six, I'm like, I don't, I have no interest in this. Nothing is giving like, like I don't. It's not like you're getting like a Chun Li skin. No, it's like avatar skins banners mm-hmm. i don't quotes it's like who i don't care about i don't i wouldn't even want to buy this at mm-hmm. all yeah. but it's like in like tekken it's like well these are parts you can put on your character so that's kind of annoying yeah. that that's in the battle pass so it's like i think street fighter is more like it's scummy but at the same time it's kind of pathetic <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weak in terms of a battle pass but tekken is kind of yeah. weak too like that battle pass is like okay that's what you get in the battle pass but like yeah, at least it's things you can put for your character and you get the money back in the Tekken coins. Um, right. Which is really cool. I like that. If they put music into any of these battle passes, <laughs> like I would go absolutely... I would not care. I'd be like, take my money. Have it. I will absolutely do anything to pay for those. Um, but yeah, with like the Mortal Kombat, like at least you can earn a lot of those skins and like invasion modes and things like that. But I think mm. my problem with like games like street fighter 6 is that like there, there's just no option for that maybe if they let you earn it once the battle pass is over i would be okay with that um but i don't mm-hmm. yeah i don't know like, i just remembered that's, that's, actually that's in mortal kombat 1 like even though you got to spend real money for some of the skins you can actually earn the in-game money by playing the game by leveling up your characters and stuff yeah exactly. so i hate i hate the fact that i'm like MK1 is doing a bit better compared to these two other games. I hate saying that. <laughs> it's like, hmm. <laughs> but it's like, that's not the, the best thing to say. Um, but I have a quote here that basically, uh, it's a bit long, but TLDR basically, someone kind of listed out one of the reasoning as to why Tekken has been doing this. It's like, oh, their recent like um, Genshin clone hasn't been doing so well. So like Tekken has to take the fall for like all the microtransaction money making stuff because Tekken 8 has been doing so well basically mm-hmm. um, so that's actually like someone like basically said like unfortunately it's not something they probably don't even want to do but it's like um, Bandai Namco was like forcing them to just like implement it gotta do it they gotta pay for it They go. we gotta make more money in this and stuff like, like Warner Bros and... with their gaming division like, they have to cover the, the losses from all the films and stuff a bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd have been bombing. Maybe if you We're put the movies out, out they might make some money from them, you fools. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was it? Live service games from now on, guys. It's profitable, am I right? <laughs> yeah, that's so bonkers. That person's either coping really hard, yes. or there are like ten different whales that are spending all the money in the Suicide Squad game. <laughs> I don't know which is true. <laughs> but yeah, I, I hope it's just coping. Like they, they're just embarrassed. And it's like, no, it's actually doing really well. Yeah, 
I have to assume people was, love the weird Joker DLC. I have to assume it was like it was like they pre-orders do. for the game because people just want to play a Rocksteady Suicide Squad game and it's got nothing to do with the actual microtransactions. <laughs> it's just the initial sales. Because it feels like it's too early to say that that aspect of the game has been a success or not. So I th- that's a good point, actually. Sure. With pre-order bonuses, you do maybe get like access to additional things. Like I haven't spent like money buying microtransaction stuff in Mortal Kombat 1, but because I pre-ordered, the, I got the deluxe version or pre-ordered it, so I actually they gave me Dragon Crystal so I can use that to buy skins that I want. So possibly, like you said, with the Battle Pass and Suicide Squad too, that could be the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear Suicide Squad gets like panned on a lot for like a lot of different reasons but is the core gameplay actually good the i have a buddy that loves it i never i have a friend who likes it but felt very miserable with the story (laughs) so he has like a half and half like experience (laughs) with it it's i'm assuming it's okay i'm assuming we we don't we don't know but i've seen i've seen a couple videos recently one that was like three hours long just like turn into every aspect of the game and oh wow (laughs) it seems like some people's view is it's like it's trying to do a borderlands with the the gear and stuff but like doesn't understand what made borderlands guns cool it's just oh it's just stats not like not like the gun gun you know that just shoots guns out it's just Mm -hmm. this this one gives you (laughs) status effects oh this one does acid damage or something (laughs) I remember mm. that meme. Uh. It's like, guys, I'm so excited to use like Poison Ivy's famous like a- 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 ice axe yeah. that increases damage by like 17.5 percent yeah. and slow or something like that. Weapons change around various <laughs> characters that make no sense. <laughs> like here's my here's my Bane I've heard themed that, uh... gun. Yeah, Bane's not the kind of guy who'd be packing a gun. Okay, sure. <laughs> it shoots steroids <laughs> to make him stronger. But yeah, um, I've heard that if you play King Shark, it's fun. Because he's like got actually fun mobility and stuff and cool attacks. Oh. The most okay. annoying thing I've heard about the game is that they later on introduce enemies that can only be hurt by this very specific method. Like, do this gun, then this melee, and then rinse and repeat. Otherwise, you can't kill them. So it becomes really stale because you're doing the same thing over and over again. And nothing else hurts them. And it's like, oh, well, that does sound boring. And then I think you're forced to, like, recharge your shield by going to, like, a certain area. You can't just, like, recharge naturally, like Halo 3 or something. So you're having to constantly disengage from the combat to go over here and get a shield and then come back. And that's boring to people, too. (laughs) I don't know. But I haven't played it, though. But my buddy loves it. He's like, no, man, it's good. I enjoy it a lot. We all four get on every night and have a good time. like, okay, well, good. He even won't play Mortal Kombat with me sometimes. Because he's like, sorry, man, I'm playing Suicide Squad. (laughs) And I'm like, damn, I, I hope, that hurts. Hope you, That's like worse than being stood up on a date. I don't really know what that says about the fact that you'd rather play Suicide Squad than Mortal Kombat 1. Mm. I hope he enjoys, I hope he enjoys uh, grinding for what was it, like 13 different Brainiac fights that are just rehashes of the, the Justice League fights. This Brainiac has the They're flash powers. Soon. This one has Green Lantern. <laughs> That's the, that's that the recent one after they had a Joker, mind. right? Green Lantern, Brainiac? Yeah, then I think Superman's <laughs> next and they'll do a Batman one. Wait, how do we know though? No one played it. Nobody played the Joker DLC. How do we know? This is all just hearsay. <laughs> no one, no one allegedly, played that. We don't allegedly. know. Not leaks, <clears throat> but allegedly. I probably, I probably have to finish yeah. the DLC to unlock Joker. Because he's been, really? he's been held captive mm-hmm. by one of the Brainiacs. You have, to, you have to go through all that grind, beat Brainiac, and then you unlock the Joker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like you can't just play as him from the start. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, but mm-hmm. so since we've been going through like that's the microtransaction part about the patch, but what about the gameplay part? Why is people like hating on like the recent gameplay stuff with Tekken? So there's two things: um, the actual intended balance update and the unintended side effects. The unintended side effects are my favorite because I'm a huge fan of gum <laughs> bugs and glitches in fighting games. And going on Twitter and watching these like circumstances, and keep in mind, I have no idea how rare or uncommon these events are, but one that made me laugh the most, it was like, oh, y'all actually broke Tekken. And it shows someone pop rage art, right? And the person playing Kuma can just move during their startup animation and just sidesteps behind them. (laughs) And then just throws them. And I'm like, that's so awesome. Just just gonna walk around while you're doing like a whoa, like pose, and then just throw you. Do you just like see them in the background while they're doing the rage art? Yes, it's so funny. You seem just like, (laughs) Like, just, like, step into frame behind him. He just, like, waves just, as he's going by. That, that, sounds, like something, that sounds like something that's you would amazing. see in, like, a Paul arcade ending. He's there, like, doing all these big mm-hmm. poses, and Kuma's just, like, casually walking behind him, ready to, like, hit him when he's not looking. 
<laughs> if I could, I would tell them, like, please, obviously fix the game, but save that current state of the game in, like, a different folder or something, and make a new game mode where we can just play that stupid, broken, nonsensical version of Tekken, because <laughs> I, I love it, and it's hilarious. And there's way more glitches than just that, but the one that I remember the most was the <laughs> moving during their rage arc, because that should not be possible. I've heard... Um, uh... now, the most annoyance one was like the wall break and floor breaks have been very yeah. changed. Yeah. So essentially, I hate to use this word, but they were lazy. Instead of addressing oh. each character individually and seeing who should keep their floor break and who should keep their wall splat, whatever, they did more of like a universal nerf that affected like almost everybody. Mm -hmm. So now a lot of the player expression is gone. A lot of the creativity for some of the characters is gone. And it's like, oh, darn, that, that really sucks. That's a big bummer. Like, um, and it makes the moves just not make sense anymore. Like, Jin clearly, when he's, sorry, Devil Jin, he clearly grabs you and throws you onto the floor, so it should break it, right? But now it just doesn't anymore. <laughs> and so it's just, like, it's, like, very unsatisfying to, like, end the combo with it now. Then there's me who got floor breaks by accident. It was like, no, I wasn't ready for this follow-up. <laughs> what do I do in this situation? <laughs> uh, Yeah. But that's pretty much the gist of it. Everyone's mad that a lot of the, like, player expression and creativity went away. Um, some of the setups, they used to be kind of a mind game. Like, for example, Kazuya had some setups where he would knock you on your back, and based on how you responded, you would either get hit or avoid his setup, right? His Oki pressure. Well, now you can just get away from it. There's no mind game anymore. You just get up. <laughs> mm. And it's like, oh, well, that's, that's not mm. fun. Because I love those free hits. I used to call that dirt when I played Tekken 7. I was like, buddy, I learned so much dirt with my character. I've always guaranteed hits that you can't escape now. And he's like, why don't you just actually get good at the game? Then you wouldn't need dirt. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, yeah. he's roasting me so hard. <laughs> it's okay. He's a filthy king player. And now it's okay to hate king players because king's finally good. <laughs> so we can hate on king now. <laughs> I love king, though. He's awesome. The uh, Yeah, like this this recent like patch has been like so effective that I think on Steam right now, it's already got mixed reviews. Went from like very positive just mixed already i'm like damn oh, man. one patch already oh. like caused the outrage Holy shit. i i i remember kind of seeing like a lot of people feeling negative towards like the game like about a week or two ago more more or less just like the current state of the meta and stuff like mm -hmm. oh like the tactics are kind of gone compared to the previous games it's all offense and like well, the big thing about the True. game which is still an issue even in this patch is pluggers are still existing and that's really yeah. annoying, like people a lot. It's like, why can't why can't we remove this thing that's been in the game for like ten years and stuff? So they're finding new ways to plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I I, I got into, more into the Tekken stuff like just just recently since I just started with like Tekken Eight and stuff. So it's like, it's very interesting to see how, like, easily the the community shifts with like just like some. I would even say, even though these are like smaller things, like justifiably hateable, but still, it's like you're gonna you're gonna go from like your this is your god tiered game to just like Pfft, we're dead game, we're done. I'm not playing this game anymore. It's it's very interesting to see like that aspect about it and stuff. Mm. Uh, people say that, but they're still playing. So yeah. oh yeah, true. <laughs> it's true. But imagine you watch the Tekken Seven numbers just go up because they're like screw this balance <laughs> patch, going back to the good times. Go into Tekken 7 where I can play Master Raven and uh, Lydia. No, no one has ever said, I'm going to go back to the game where I can play Master Raven. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, the, yeah, <laughs> gee, what kind of loser says that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of like knee-jerk responses in the FGC, and there's always mm -hmm. one reason to to hate one balance or one patch update or the other but they they, they hate playing their own game like that is just yeah. my general observation <laughs> league of I legends just, players <laughs> <laughs> i i just saw like maximilian dude made a video talking about this and he's like there is no other community who hates their game more than tekken like apparently okay, oh okay <laughs> and there's no fan of tekken more that hates tekken more or something but like you said league mm -hmm. of legends <laughs> i liked when even say jam years ago said the same thing but even more direct he went listen do you really think that you hate their game more than they hate their game? <laughs> you know who hates <laughs> Guilty Gear the most? Guilty Gear players. Man, this new character, fuck that guy. This balance, man, it's shit. My character still needs buffs. What the fuck? <laughs> and he's like, nobody <laughs> hates their own game more than them. So same with Tekken, I suppose. The amount of yeah. people, like, I, 
even I noticed that Asuka was like nerfed in Tekken 8 and also what she got that was new is not the best. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> but I'm like my buddy, I'm like, hey, there's still stuff you can do to make Asuka work. Like no no character in Tekken is bad because they have such a big move list. Like yeah. you can always make them work. And people in the comments being like, you don't get it. You you don't understand how bad it is and how everyone just plays June instead because June's just Asuka but better. Which, to be fair, is how I feel whenever I get rocked by a good June player. I'm like, why don't I have any of this? <laughs> Those are my moves, but they're safe when you do them. <laughs> What's going on? But, yeah, I yeah. remember, like, even, like, people who are, like, trying to be more positive or Tekken. Like, a, a YouTuber I really like to watch, like, FDX. And he's, like, trying to be positive, trying to look at the brighter side of the situation. Like, just by mm -hmm. saying that, people are like show how dare you how dare you be like that it's like this should, you should be shit talking this game. why are you positive chill. literally he, he just he's just trying to be a bit more positive towards the game and he's already being called out for it it's like huh where have i seen this before <laughs> it's like i i, I want yep. the best for the game and i feel like tekken 8 is their newest installment so they're definitely going to put a lot more effort into making it good yeah. but like i like I, I don't like having the appeal just being like negative towards things too so but yeah, it, it is kind of annoying when also like the community goes on their own kind in a way. <laughs> yeah. It really feels like yeah. the universe said no you. <laughs> it, it's only a matter of time before VR starts getting all these shill accusations. What you like the new rendition of the Living Forest, for example? Oh shill, shill, shill. <laughs> I I mean to be fair, I think it helps that like I am a super casual, so my I don't want to say, like, excuse, but, like, what I usually just say is, like, yeah, I don't know anything about, like, the newest, like, patch updates or anything like that. Like, <laughs> I'm just playing it for fun. Like, just like you guys are also hopefully playing it for fun. True. So, then you're not a real fan. And, I know. <laughs> Poser. I'm not a real gamer. I, <laughs> I am. I'm a, not a real oh, gamer. Oh, my God. Some of the... I mean, I'm sure you guys know about this, but, yeah, just... Just, like, being, like, a woman and also, like, a uh. person of color. Like, I get all sorts of, like interesting comments some of them are just so ridiculous that like i i just laugh because they're they're just yeah, so you have out to. there like i just remember one that i got was like that was just so out there that was like yeah woman in fighting games just don't mix and i was like oh. i gotta i gotta frame this this is amazing i gotta quote this all the time the now. pin of shame pin yeah, of I shame think, i think i've gotten one comment that just basically is like it, there's no context, but basically it's just like, what are those like racist Chinese people? Ching, Chong, Chong. I'm, I'm no. spacing them out, but that's it. Just that, and I'm like, uh, okay. yeah. I got I got one where I was talking about um, box art, and I was talking about how mm. like um, in this one SNK box art, they put uh, they put Terry instead of Keo because I thought they wanted to appeal more to like an American audience. And some guy was like, you're just trying to put forth your Chinese communist propaganda, aren't you? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, no, they so caught you. It was, like, hilarious. Wait, is is, is, is oh Kyo Chinese gosh. now? What, what? No, he's Japanese. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I also find it really funny to be, like, racist against Chinese people in a Mortal Kombat video where the main character is Chinese. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I hate Chinese people. Me, good uh, thing my, my good old Mortal Kombat's have, are not led by Chinese people. person who's only ever played MKX and never any other in the series. <laughs> Reminds me of like someone saying, um, oh my god, if they made a Netflix version of the God of War games, they'd probably make Kratos black. And somebody's like, nobody well, tell him who the voice actor is. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's funny, you reminded me of a comment that I get every now and then. It's not very common, but it always makes me laugh because... Someone just randomly compares me to a different white YouTuber. Like, bro looking like Peanut Butter Gamer. <laughs> bro looking like Blake. <laughs> and I'm just like... Oh, and no. I, I, look, I looked him up and I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> so, I take that so as this a person must definitely honestly. be a different, <laughs> different race. But that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, at least they're not being mean. They're just like, you look like blank. And I'm like, hey, fair enough. And that one guy did look like me if I put on, like, 30 pounds. So that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like me, but chubby. That's going to be yeah. me in the retirement era, boys. Racist is so stupid. put on 30 pounds. <laughs> True. Ah, yes. The very bold stance, Nick. Yeah. I am all, against all racism. All the boldest, no one ever has this take. statements out here. <laughs> <laughs> Racism. <laughs> Brave <is> statements. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Snake. Really? Wow. 
<laughs> controversial. Luckily, angle. like ninety nine percent of my audiences are awesome, like my fans. So these are just like the very little comments that I get that are usually just like weird. Like I got I got one recently that just says like MK one is woke trash. To support MK one is to oh, support God. Sweet Baby Ink. I'm like. Oh, okay. You're still what on that? that? Jesus. Is it just is it just because I wrote doesn't suck in my title? Like, okay. <laughs> well, actually, that and um, unless something changes, I'll, I'll report on it. But that's also not true. Like, there's no credit with Sweet Baby Inc. and Mortal Kombat One. Yeah, they did work with WB like, on Suicide Squad though, so that's like where that came from. And there's an IMDb post. But, but yeah, that's literally the woke it, comments yeah. are my favorite because even in my what went wrong video for Mortal Kombat One, someone's like, what went wrong? More like what went woke. <laughs> <All capital. laughs> I almost yeah, got a- BR to do a spit take. That would have been hilarious. She almost would, <laughs> but didn't quite get it. Damn. No, I, it, it just brought up um, another incident. I just remembered is that I did a video on like the Evo FGC channel, and I literally wrote like uh, in one of uh, it was like a, a Power Rangers battle for the grid. And um, mm-hmm. I, in there, I talk about like, okay, I'm gonna pick Chun Li over Ryu because like Chun Li's just as iconic as Ryu, and she doesn't usually get put in like as many things as Ryu does. And yeah, yeah just like people talking about like, oh yeah, just bringing forth your Chinese agenda, and like, oh, this is the woke liberal mob telling you that what the you hell? are like woman, woman leads in fighting games, and I'm just like, dude. Jeez, I can't, I, I can't I believe picture I, that kind of. How could you pick a Chinese <laughs> character over a Japanese? That is so woke. <laughs> I just keep picturing like that person is like that Key and Peele meme, where like they're just already sweating and they're resisting the urge to type something like that, but they just can't. Oh. Like, I got it. I see my chance. <laughs> They've been holding it in for too long. Oh, target! <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like, oh, of course the girl picks the girl character or something like that, you know. That's what I thought they would say. Which, I get the same flack, too. Where it's like, ah, oh, of course the incel picks the ladies. And I'm like, hey! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it is true that I usually gravitate. Unless the character is like a robot or a cyborg or a really cool ninja, I usually do gravitate towards the ladies. But or a masked, that's just like, my... wrestler-type character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything that's like out of the norm. Like, um, King's just so different. So you, you, gotta, you gotta learn King. You gotta play King. Plus, I, I love see, throwing people. I see when City of the Wolves come out, you're going to be picking Tizok. Dude, I'm so happy he's back. I never thought he'd go from Dinosaur back to Tizok, just because Dinosaur is so cool, and like everyone thinks that a T-Rex is cooler than like a Griffin, right? But I'm like, please oh. bring back Tizok, and they did. I was like, oh my god, I never thought I'd see the day when he came back. It's such a, it's such a cool <laughs> and then we have gimmick. like a... Well, yeah, the, it's such a cool gimmick for a Because wrestling. that's like... King- there you go. <laughs> Finally, I got to talk over someone. No, someone. you go. Yay. We keep accidentally doing this. Uh, I think it's a really cool gimmick for a wrestler character in a fighting game where one game they'll come out in their heel persona and one they'll be the uh, face persona. There's another character in KOF. I think it's... I think there's Raiden and I think Ramon did that at some point where they have two different personas. Oh, cool. I know Rumble, Rumble Rose is like a major uh, thing in that series, but... You know, real fighting games. I, I know that, like, Tizog turned into, like, the... No, 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 Ramon was the one who defeated Tizog, and that's why Tizog turned into the King of Dinosaurs, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I just watched Aimed, Froggy's oh my video gosh. on his 15, yeah. like, Dude. essays about King of Fire, so I know what I'm talking yeah. about. That, that, that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, it's not going to yeah, happen, since, but imagine um, if Angel... Imagine if Angel, or Angel... For anyone who wants to keep it simple, Ooh. imagine if she has a heel persona and she comes out as like demon or someone. That'd be so sick. I would well, love that. Is that what- she's already kind of like an asshole like personality, right? So I mean, she's already kind of a heel. How dare you? I mean, that, that's what. <laughs> well, and she did have like a. That's what SNK gets. Gets the dommy mommy character like a Sindel or a, a Reina or a Jury. That's where they get their character in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, she we already has have Shermie. Demon- Oh, sorry. sorry. I was just going to, before we move on, I was going to say that mm-hmm. uh, Angel, she does have a demon alt in KOF 14, so. Yes, now I'm remembering, yeah. Ooh. That one had even more, Diabla. even more cleavage, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> but yeah, well, I was going to say. I was still so about- mad that she didn't get a new super in 15. I know a lot of characters didn't get a new super, but like, I guess Angel, the whole, her putting their face in her boobs was too iconic to change, but I wanted a new one because I love playing that character, and she's hard. <laughs> My character is hard to play, so if you're actually winning with her, it's like, look how cool I am. But yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, in Gotta the... get your internet points <laughs> with, with other guys <laughs> playing KOF, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but I like playing hard characters. Hmm. But, but so yeah, I don't have anything the, to say, the... but I just want to interrupt Sonic because I want to I know to you did it. that on purpose, Thing. <laughs> I know you did that on purpose. Like, I'll, I'll be really fast. But the LDR is like, because the lore of King of Fighters and Fatal Fury are like separate. They're like two different like mm-hmm. worldview, basically. So Tizlock got defeated, and that's why he became the King of Dinosaurs in King of F. Ah. But that's King of Fighters lore. But in like, Ga- Ga- Garu, I think, or like the like Fatal Fury lore, like that never happened. So he's still Tizlock. Mm-hmm. And they're keeping that there you go. twenty year ago like storyline to continue with that. So ah, I was like, fi- okay, that's, fin- that's finally a reason to have two separate timelines instead of just having one, making it simple. There we go. <laughs> I'm curious about the uh, the new girl because she plays very similar to Joey, and I'm like, okay, yeah. is this a daughter or is this a fan girl? Like how Terry had a, a fan girl in KOF uh, 14. Oh, the, 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 or the, girl the girl from the Gacha Kyo's game she made way over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a fan? Oh, wait, that is actually a fangirl. Yes, that's right. I just remember that. <laughs> I remember that really yep. obscure lore. <laughs> it's definitely a fan. There's no way Joe is fucking. <laughs> oh. oh! I was at least he thinking adopted. a student, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> student. That's a good point. It could just be a regular student. We're out here like assuming if it's blood or a fangirl. Could just be a student. Could just be a Sakura. So, Jeanette Cage? Is that number yes. three? <laughs> I have a so- very important question I wanted to ask about. Is, is it Jeanette Cage or Janet Cage? Because I feel like 90% of people I've heard say Janet it's Cage. It's Janet. Like Jeanette, Jeanette is a separate is- name. It's just that dog is weird. Yeah. I. <laughs> you know <laughs> you what, Snake? <laughs> it's finally time that I come clean about this. There are some words that I have a tough time saying, and it requires a lot of focus. For some reason, Janet is one of those words. I'd actually stop and prepare to say Janet. Whereas Jeanette just rolls off the tongue for me. I don't know why. But it is Janet because she yells her own name during the fatal blow. She goes, here's Janet. And then, like, you know, sticks them. Which is funny if you get the joke. But if you don't get the joke, it's stupid. And it's just her saying her name because it's no longer a shining reference now. Yeah, she, she should have been Jenny. But Jenny Cage. <clears throat> Jenny, right? Then I could have said it. Here's then I Jenny. Said Jenny. <laughs> That's where all my dislikes came from. I made a great breakdown of Jeanette Cage, Janet Cage, and <laughs> people, like, they had a, a surprisingly high of, like, 10% of it were dislikes, and I'm like, why? Then I read the comments, and it's like, you saying the name wrong the whole video has me <laughs> wanting to punch my monitor. <laughs> oh, my god! Like, is it that deep? Is it that deep? <laughs> it's, 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 now I kind of just want to keep lot, doing though. it. It's a workable gimmick. We just oh, get, you get, things, you you get things wrong on purpose, so then it, it, it farms engagement because people are like, no, you're wrong. And it's like, haha, my video and I get some more people who also do that same yes. thing. Thank you. True, true. It's a real but meta. It, it's an actual is, trick. You should, you should literally yeah, you but should the put is, the name in the video Jeanette Cage like, like with an extra T-E on the end. <laughs> Just to annoy people. Spell it all wrong. Put the rainbow flag next to it. Ooh, <laughs> to no, that, that, oh, oh, yeah, no. That, 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 yes. that's, that's a little... Oof, that's too spicy. <laughs> yeah, simmer down, simmer down. I support... <laughs> I support Jeanette Cade's transition. Like, I, I'm all for that. I put that on the thumbnail or something. You'll get you'll get some very interesting people like re- be doing response videos to you. <laughs> but yeah, so we we slightly mentioned Jeanette Cage like a couple weeks ago, but that's only because she was in the trailers in the combat cast. Now that she's officially out, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about like how she good is for her, good for her. The gameplays. <laughs> but how, how she is in like the gameplays and, and stuff like that which again Trona Dog you're a man you're gonna be the one who's able to help us out with that oh, a lot thank you um, well so basically she's really good so far all the cameo characters have been really good but just like with Kenshi's spirit you have to actually know what you're doing to like make the most of her right mm-hmm. but she's got a lot of crazy stuff mm-hmm. you can use um, there's just frame timing what I find to be the funniest gimmick that she has is her mime time where she comes out and makes the invisible wall as a mime and like the enemy can't get past it they have to jump over it there's two really cool things about that one it's got an actual health bar you just can't see it but that's what decides when she leaves it's not a number of hits it's got health so damaging attacks can make her leave sooner but the really cool part is if you could somehow summon the wall then get behind your opponent it creates a corner mid-screen Oh, so yeah, you can do yeah. corner combos mid-screen, which is kind of cool. You just see Jeanette like holding this invisible wall up, just like leaning on it while you're comboing the opponent. Seems great for like a <laughs> screenshot or a hype tournament moment. So yeah, that's I, really cool. I love the mime time. 
I've been like uh, watching Honeybee, one of my favorite reptile players, and he's been trying a lot of like uh, Janet Cage. And one of the things he does is because before it's like he would use Scorpion as a cameo, so that way he can end the combo and then just use Scorpion's Baba, and then he can go invis. And when he's finished that combo, yep. he's completely invisible, and he gets the combo with that. Now that he's doing Janet Cage, what he does is instead of like Scorpion, he will use the combo and then at the corner use the wall so now you have Janet Cage the wall with your opponent at the corner and Reptile invisible and now it's just like oh shit what's gonna happen now <laughs> basically mm -hmm. it's like even more pressure it's like if I'm gonna jump in the overhead or or if I'm gonna just like keep poking you from like low basically it's like you don't know and you got a freaking <laughs> wall you gotta handle right now basically <laughs> yep mm -hmm. yeah it's really oh, cool I, 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 get, I get the feeling that uh, poor BR doesn't know what we're talking about <laughs> uh, I'm pretty brain dead when it comes to cameos. Like, uh, Janet, I used her once to level okay. her up a little bit, but Same. I mostly use Chameleon because, um, you know, it's an ambush cameo, and I'm just, mm -hmm. like, bad at the overall assist mechanics, and I have no clue how to use, like, Janet and, like, Shijinko, and I just pretty much just, like, stick with one that I know how to use and works for me, and then call it a day, honestly. Nice. Hey, at is least you know the Cyrex? terms. A lot of people still don't know su summon and ambush. They just go, yeah, the attack where, like, you can do it at the same time. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> so at least you know the term. So that's good. What were you saying, Sonic? Oh, no, I was just saying, is it Cyrax? Like, the one camo you use? Oh, no, it's Serena. She's she's the one I would use, but I have no idea what, what's going on. Yeah. Serena was, like, the, the brain-dead cameo partner <laughs> that can do, like, all the easy combos and stuff. Right. She's very fun. And she, she can drain the easy. opponent's meter. She can um, do a quick projectile. Um, she's pretty good. She has one attack that you almost never see where she runs in as a demon and does like a little backflip kick. But you almost never see anyone do it because everything else she has is really good. Yeah. Uh, I still can't... Chameleon gives me too much OCD because she changes without my permission. And I'm like, who told you you can be Melina right now? I was ready for Jade. And, and now, who told you this was okay? <laughs> but Chameleon's actually broken too, which is kind of funny. Um, she has actually unintended glitches. She has three. I missed one. Have they not fixed has, them yet? They're, they're still in the game? I don't think so. Wow. Yeah. She has two damage glitches. It gives your character way more combo damage than they're meant to actually have. And then she has um, a wake up that's kind of buggy. So every cameo character has a uh, attack you can do that has invincibility. And the idea is that if you're out of meter, you can use the cameo to kind of save you on wake up, right? Melina has this too, and it's it's the ball roll. Oh, sorry, Chameleon has it with the Melina ball roll. <laughs> the problem is, normally when you do those moves, if they hit the opponent, they're not supposed to combo them, like launch them. They have different properties when done as a wake up. Hers still combos. So she's the only character with an invincible wake up combo starter uh, as a cameo. So that's kind of funny too. Chameleon just out here breaking the game. Yep. Hell yeah, I love it. I'll, I'll take advantage of any little dirty trick I can get. But so they, I didn't yeah, know that though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start taking notes. But yeah, man. Yeah, that's my oh, mentality. Fuck Serena, just her three knives all the time. Like I just, mm -hmm. I just can't deal with that. Shwa, 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 shwa. Just all the time. You have to throw them all out there. Unironically, a great partner for Sub Zero though, which is why it's so funny because canonically, like they're into each other. Ah, uh, yeah. So I like how they're good. They're good combos in the gameplay too. That had to have been intentional. I like the uh, Johnny. K uh, the only hint that we have of Serena X Bihan in the uh, game is Johnny's like announcer voice. I think he does say like Bihan's GF or something like that as like when the announcer when you select Serena. Doesn't he also say Lady Reptile with Chameleon? Lady Reptile. Oh, so. I think so. He's he's got good lines. Then, I always like having him the, as the announcer. The, <laughs> the one he says for Jeanette Cage or Janet Cage is so funny to me too. He goes she me. Yeah, she me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, though, to go to a different reality and just see everything's the same, but, like, I'm just a lady in this timeline. Like, huh, so that's how I would look. Good. It's, it's, <laughs> Good it's, not like, it's not even a broad, like, um, a, a broadly gender swap universe. It's just the one difference is you specifically ended up being born only you. gender, and that's it. That's the only difference. Everyone else is the same. <laughs> It would be interesting if they were all actually different. That'd be kind of funny, like that Spider-Man episode um, with the Spider Gwen when they were all like a lady in that timeline. It was all flipped. Um, like, I think even George Washington was also a lady. Like it was all just just flipped around. Um, also, apparently Janet Cage is like the only really muscular girl in the game right now. So people are pretty excited huh. about that. 
She's got the, the six pack abs. You could like grate cheese on her. Which, which I think is, <laughs> fact, is, is factored into the whole idea where people are saying, oh, she looks like a, like a, tran, a trans person or something because she's, oh. cause she's more, uh, yeah. built a bit closer towards the men than to the other women who are just slim. I don't know why MK just shies away from muscular women. Like, like the, the, the one yeah. we've got, we got Shiva. What happened? Shiva, that's Shiva, that's, that's what I was thinking too. That's true, Shiva. And they gave like the work, she was the, proud of it too. She, had, like, she straight up flexed at the end of like her outfit. Oh yeah, and she had like the <laughs> worst uppercut range. Like the the Shokan woman has the worst uppercut range in the game. Like wha- how? Yeah, arms are her Think gimmick. It was shockingly funny how stubby she was. <laughs> yeah, it was shockingly funny how stubby she was. Worst uppercut, one of the worst down ones. Uh, her mid was super short. I still played her a lot and had a lot of fun with her. But you made me think of something when you brought up the the trans thing, Snake. I'm gonna call that Schrodinger's woke. What? It is woke, and <laughs> until it is confirmed or denied, it is both woke and not woke at the same time. <laughs> is Janet Cage a woman, oh or God. is she trans? Until confirmed, she is both and neither. <laughs> Never. Um, but, uh, <laughs> What's but, Schrodinger's but back, cat? But it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But back, back on Janet Cage, I think, um, I mean, she, is just, she just came out, so a lot of people are just trying her out. I think the one <laughs> a bit unfortunate thing, which I mean, it's still, it's, it's her gimmick. It's like how you play this character is like 90% of the time when I see Janet Cage, it is just because of her cameo move that just does the <laughs> in the sky, basically. That punch. Like, that's the, the most useful <laughs> yeah. one, basically. So you just heard really like, <laughs> in the air, basically. So it's like a semi Sonya. <laughs> oh, and that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when she jumps and like hits one, it just extends combos like to 50% with like, most mm-hmm. characters and stuff. And you can mash too. You're not forced to do the timing. If you want to just mash that button, you don't have to time it. It's supposed to be specific timing to get the three follow ups, but no, you can just mash it if you oh, want to be a degenerate. That That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I also like how her nut punch is not called the nut punch, it's called the crotch destroyer. <laughs> Oh really? Like, we gotta be fair. Like it's not just guys. She's destroying lady crotches too. So we gotta be very clear about that. <laughs> do, do you guys know that it's in, the crotch destroyer in MK One? I think two as well. Like Johnny wouldn't do the punch if you were against a woman. He would do the splits, but really? he, oh, I think I heard about he that. wouldn't even punch. It's only in later games with like interesting. The later games, like yeah, he'll he'll punch a woman in the crotch. It's fine. But in, in MK One, he just go do the splits in front of Sony because he's trying to show off and impress her, and then she is open for a free hit. <laughs> It's funny wow. you mentioned splits to impress wow. her because Jeanette Cage or Janet Cage, son, I'll get it, I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> um, Janet Cage, she has an ability, a gimmick where when you call her out like Kenshi Spirit, she be um, her cameo meter starts to drain. Right, she can't yeah. stay out forever. But if you want to, you can have her do the splits and she'll just smile at the camera and it rebuilds a bit of her cameo bar so she can stay out for longer. <laughs> so she is actually doing the splits just to impress you. <laughs> it's one of her, her gimmicks. Yeah, li- literally, for oh, like yeah. the 70% combos I've seen with her, it's like, ta 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 ding! Coming back to combo, basically. That's why I'm loving that there's like combo artists out there because I'm pretty good at combos, but one thing I'm not good at is controlling two characters at once and I've never enjoyed it, never been good at it. And I love what Maximilian dude calls it finger gymnastics. I'm stealing that. <laughs> I don't have the best finger That's gymnastics. So, yeah. Well, because to stop her from moving. I like tag games. No, no, I like tag games. When you like switch out, I love Tekken Tag too. All the all the Tekken veterans hated that game for all the new mechanics, and I was like totally here for it. I thought it was super fun, and I like when it's like Marvel Three where they like, just one assist and then you can switch them out. That's all fine. It's having to mm-hmm. simultaneously control two. Mm-hmm. Like, um, having to control Ed and Guilty Gear is tough for me. Um, trying to do... With Kenshi, it's easier because you can cheat. Like, they seem to have designed him with that in mind. Where, like, if you time it correctly, you never have to actually control them both. You're just taking turns. So, yeah. that's good. But with, like, Jeanette Cage, for example, you have to hold the block button to keep your own character from moving. Then she can walk around. Otherwise, you both walk. And it can completely mess up your positioning and vice versa. And well, I think just Kenshi to make it... Just, right? That, yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think to make her do the splits, you have to be holding block, which is confusing too, because you could be doing a combo as the main character, but still hold block and then press the cameo button and she'll do the little splits. So I'm just thinking about how annoying that would be to like have to do. And I'm sure it all comes down to muscle memory. So the really cool people are the ones that can improv it whenever they want to. That's the, the true chads out there, but yeah. Mm. So yeah. far, hmm? so far oh. all the DLC cameos have been like, for people that love the game, that are like veterans, they have not made a simple cameo yet this entire time. True. Maybe yeah. Movado. Maybe he'll be basic. <laughs> I mean, I prefer more effort put into these cameos because it's like, especially Janet Cage, it's like, she's kind of like 
two cameos in one with how much effort they put into this character. I, yeah. She, you even if you win the match with Janet Cage, sometimes your character won't talk and Janet will talk actually. Like she will do the win speech. Like I forgot what she says, but it's like she'll be like, "Hell yeah," like or something like that. I don't forget what she says, but she will like your character won't talk and Janet will be the one talking. I'm like, that is so much more effort compared to like Scorpion who does fire close to you fire mid-screen fire from a far away and that's like half of his abilities <laughs> i they could have done one better and have Jeanette cage actually put her fingers on your lips of the main character and then do like her little speech that'd be so sick and your main oh. character's like, like yeah, what? darius going on? is the one who interacts with the character a lot more in the game mm -hmm. so like yeah that, that, that i would love i always love when cameo fighters like interact with the characters and stuff and she has the triple yeah. fatality, it turns out. Like, she does have the triple uppercut. Um, it, it does exist. Though, it's awesome. I don't think it summons three heads is the only dumb part. She just does it no. three times, right? No, no, no. It Aww. doesn't summon three heads. But it's like he, she does the uppercut three times. And it, like, but it, like, I, blood, I, like, I want three, three heads. Times. I will true, not true. be happy until all three heads are on the floor, because that was half the fun, is that it, it made three heads. So, so <laughs> she, she, she uppercuts you three times, and on the third one, the head comes off. Uh mm -mm. no wait actually I'll I'll look up the footage. it comes off immediately snake but then she just keeps doing the uppercut and it makes all the gory like slow mo and effects and all that but there's no head <laughs> see he's like me he's thinking what's the point like yeah, if you're not gonna do it a hundred percent then why'd you even include it oh, like, you know? at least if it's gonna be that when she like, the third hit is when it comes off because that would make sense it's like oh she's cool not quite as strong as Johnny you know I know it sounds awful to say but she's because She's a woman, so she's not as strong as Johnny by the logic of the setting, and so she can't do it in one go. And then the next game, she it's like they put it in where she can do it, and it's like, ah, oh, yes, she got stronger. Yeah. Okay. I know it sounds awful. Yeah, well, that's why. Um... It, it, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're not wrong. I mean, <laughs> that's why MK11 had the best fatality ever for Johnny Cage oh, because yeah. it was a massive reference to the triple yes. uppercut, but it just took him three takes yeah. to make it happen. Oh, I love. I miss that one outro animation so much too. One of the round victories had Johnny Cage trying to back up, and like one of the boom mics came down and tapped his head, and he went, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and that was like one of my favorite things ever because either it means that he knows it's a set and they just like made him angry, but I prefer the idea that it's like the Truman Show and he has no idea that his life's like being recorded, oh, and that's why he reacts like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> yeah, the, he has no uh, idea it's all just a movie. So here's the clip if you want to see it, Snake. So he does, she she does like just hit you three times i think it's still awesome yeah. they reference it and with that being said though her second her her other brutality is <laughs> pretty awesome the one where she like did you know what the second brutality is <laughs> mm -mm. well she she goes for like a nut like a nut like a was it crotch destroyer what, what did you call it just then it's crotch destroyer yeah yeah so and the opponent's one, eyeballs let's... will fly out and then Janet Cage oh. will pull her sunglasses onto the opponent to stop it from bleeding. Uh, yeah, the, the eyes popping out oh, was that is cool. MKX, Johnny had that as a brutality. Because there was two. There was one where you hit him and the eyes pop out and one where the head comes off. Which was which was really funny. It's like you hit someone in the mm. balls so hard yeah. the head just flies off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah then and by the way, like, gotta say... She just sunglasses on, on the opponent just to stop them from like gushing the blood out. That, that, that's pretty fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, and they, they're they're even left posing there at the end too. Like they look all funny, like they're in a little pose with their sunglasses yeah. on. That's <laughs> awesome. And by the way, I think they updated um, Janet Cage's face, but I could be wrong. She looks pretty now. I think she looks cute think, with the sunglasses I, off. I think like um, a, a lot of Mortal Kombat characters in this game. I'm like, I don't know. Like, does this look good? It's like when Reptile first like showed. I'm like, I mean, what's going on? Why do people say like he looks good? And then like that one angle where he's like, to catch me. They'll have to see me. I'm like, oh, he looks really hot like that. And I think it's the same thing with Janet Cage. I think, depending on the angle, she does actually look really good. Like, like oh, okay, she, she looks really good. I'd say, I'd say Reptile pulls off Tanya the, uh, the skateboarder look pretty well. Because that, that shot of Tanya yeah, in the trailer too. where she looked awful. But in the actual game, she looks <laughs> fine. Still not, doesn't compare to the actual face model, but it's not as bad mm. as it is from that one shot. It just depends on... The, the angle and the lighting and the facial expression a lot goes into it generally speaking you, you got a pretty good looking cast it doesn't quite compare to the 2021 film but you know it's, it's pretty good oh I thought you were going to say the most important thing is <laughs> they made Striker hot that's all that matters <laughs> Striker <laughs> that's true they gave him a pretty good face it, it cracks me up like someone in the comments the very first thing they said like why is he hot why like a little like crying sweating emoji or whatever <laughs> and people were like what the fuck and I had to pause and look at it and I'm like no no she's got a point he do be looking pretty <laughs> handsome, actually. 
which I think is fair. He should be handsome. But he's no John Cena. He got nothing else going for him. He's pretty lame otherwise. Like Moose he's no John Cena. That is true. Oh, yeah, John Cena and Jeanette Cage, me and my buddy were talking about it. They both should have an option to not have their headgear on. Like, for Peacemaker, it could be, like, oh. an invisible helmet. Like, oh, he's like, yeah. invisible helmet. You know, it could be fun. Or a John Cena Because they, they want to see, you know, John Cena's face. Yeah. And then with um, with Janet, she just looks pretty cute without the sunglasses. Um, it's funny that, of all people, a Johnny Cage character would not have good taste in sunglasses. Sorry, but her defaults just don't look that good. <laughs> she looked way better in just, like, aviators or something, you know? In my personal opinion, but because default Johnny Cage has nice sunglasses, I like to make him wear the the star ones, which my friend uh, hates. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot I'm of like, fun what, Johnny you have Cage sunglasses. Fashions? <laughs> you know what would have been amazing would have been if you have Johnny and Janet together, if like they would coordinate sunglasses, so Janet would wear whatever Johnny's got equipped. <laughs> or like maybe mid match they just like switch sunglasses. Ooh, that's oh, that'd be so cute. Oh, uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. the game I'm not sure if uh, Br knows this, but there's an interesting so. Snake brought up the nut punch not being done to the women, but in MK1, mm-hmm. Johnny Cage has a move where he takes his sunglasses off and just tosses them straight in the air, and they kind of fall down on the opponent, right? You <gasps> can choose to not have him wear sunglasses as one of the cosmetic like options. If you do that, the move goes away. You, you just, just no have longer the have the sunglasses oh. tossed. Yeah, he just loses the move. You, and I was like, uh, bullshit, should be invisible funny. sunglasses. It's funny because it, one of his intro animations, where, I think it's when he gets pushed back, he just, he'll just he spawn some sunglasses on his face just for the animation yeah. there because they're broken. He has to uh, take them off. But mm-hmm. like, even though, even though nice. they're not equipped, but they'll, they'll spawn there, but you'll lose a moving gameplay for it. it this game mm-hmm. is, is such an, an enigma. Does he, <laughs> does he take them off right when the round starts? Then like, he puts it on during the intro, it but just, then like, right when the round starts, does he put them away? I think he just disappears. No, it disappears. Oh, okay. He probably has, it's so yeah. it's, you, get, you, you don't have the sunglasses thrown move, and also you don't have the, um, cause he also does the the nut punch, but you can not do the nut punch, and he'll be like, you like that, and gets like the taunt meter. He loses yeah. that too, cause he can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Also, oh, true underdog. He could, like... you, you go. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh no! I was just saying, like it, it could also be fun, cause like I know that they do this for like a lot of other games where like you could taunt, and he could throw off his like sunglasses, and it's almost like a projectile. Like that—that that mm-hmm. would be cute, but I don't know. I don't know from a gameplay perspective if that would make sense. Well, yes. that's what made Third Strike so good. Like Street Fighter Third Strike was so much fun because every taunt was actually part of the gameplay. Some oh, more than right. others, but like all of them had a rose. function. Yeah, like Deadly threw his little rose, and it was great for setups because they couldn't get past the rose. It like let's say armored through it or parried it, and then like even um, Ken, like his taunt, like gave him a damage buff. I think for a very short amount of time, Chun Li got a guaranteed counter hit. It was all really cool stuff. Um, 12 turned invisible. That's a pretty good taunt. And <laughs> Q could buff his health. You couldn't tell, but his health got bigger, like as far as like how much damage he could take. And he could do it up to three times. So I'm just saying every fighting game should have that. Like The taunt should have a gameplay function just for fun. Like, why not? I, I like that idea, but I also think it's like more special when only certain characters get like taunt effects or like, like you Deadpool. want to taunt with this character. Literally, Johnny mm-hmm. Cage has that because, like, he taunts and he gets the mm-hmm. meter for the taunt meter and stuff. Mm-hmm. What did you say, Snake? Uh, Deadpool, like, Deadpool and MVC three when he taunts, like the little speech bubble that appears, can actually do a bit of damage to the opponent. I think Luigi. Oh, nice. I think Luigi has a taunt <laughs> like that in um in Smash Bros. Yes. Like we can do damage to it with it. It's 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 useless, but it's fun that it's there. <laughs> hey hey, how, don't don't say that. I've seen tournaments people use because that move is like a spike and it's really low so you go to the edge of this stage and just do the ah, and sometimes it just, <laughs> it just spikes the enemy down <laughs> it legit is a thing that like like rarely Luigi players will use <laughs> nice I love it nice. that's sick well Luigi. don't forget that like there's unintended stuff too like um Jigglypuff like her sleep thing was like a complete accidental discovery that you could like do around someone's head and like instant KO them right so in the original <laughs> that game that became the whole meta, the meta. <laughs> yes <Yeah>. yes <laughs> That's a staple. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing about cameos, though, I just wanted to bring up is that uh, one thing I really want to see for cameos is like guest character cameos. Yeah. Like, like having like King yes. Shark for Peacemaker or like Black Noir for uh, mm-hmm. like uh, Homeland or whatever. Like that would be really dope. Yeah. It's like uh, yep. before we even mentioned, it was like a very like if you're like some companies do not want to work with guest characters for Mortal Kombat because their legendary character is getting brutally murdered in a Mortal Kombat setting. Well, if they're a cameo mm-hmm. fighter, you don't need to worry about that. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they're already in there too. So like, for example, if the boys are already in there, then you can definitely put a second the boys character and it would be completely fine. That's what a lot of people were saying. I guess like maybe Netherrealm was scared that like, wow, this many guest characters? You guys are already known for doing like mostly guest characters and like your, your combat packs and now you're going to do the cameos too? Oh my god. <laughs> you say that, but three three guest characters already in the in this DLC pack, so I don't That's think they're a great really holding segue back. though, because recently the new cameo got revealed. I'm well, sorry, Sonic, what were you saying? I guess we're all kinda of done, right, with Janet Cage. Yeah. Overall, like mm -hmm. I'm 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 impressed with the with her. I, I, I think yeah, I'm impressed with her. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy that um, that her Order of Darkness black and red colour scheme is available in the game, unlike uh, the brown skin for Quan Chi oh. or the yellow outfit for Chameleon. Those are in the story mode, but we can't use them. <laughs> yeah. But Janet, uniquely, her evil alternate version is available. Mm. That's her Order that. of Darkness one. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. in that case, I'm, I want to use that skin more often if I use Janet Cage. That's awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, so they recently revealed the new cameo, and what's the funniest about it oh. is that I did say that like Mavado and Farah had a pretty equal shot of being in. I still thought it was going to be Farah because now. Yeah. They're going to have to pair up Farah with Homelander. Homelander. That's going to look super funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless they either combo. don't give him anybody or they um, they give us a surprise cameo and it is like a, like, you know, Black Noir a or something. That'd be super yeah. sick. But yeah, that'd be really mm. cool. I think no one stops uh, the A train, baby. I, mean, I like your theory how, about. How, how, sorry, how great would it be if they had A train as the, uh, the cameo? Uh, a special cameo and then his fatality is literally just robin's death from the show and like, and like, the, <laughs> yeah, and like his, 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 oh, his partner is getting splattered with the blood <laughs> while it's happening like, his focus on them slow oh. motion literally he'll be like oh crap i'm late Shoo, sorry <laughs> sorry and, and then then. shows away or something like that gives, gives himself a shot bye <laughs> 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 and then if they wanted to go the uh, extra mile, they could even try to recreate the reaction shot where, like, the blood gets on your main character, and they're just kind of like, yeah, like <laughs> covered in the blood. Yeah, the, saying, like, 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 the, like, the focus Ooh. is on your character getting splattered in slow motion with the blood, and then different characters get different reactions. Mm -hmm. So a character like Johnny Cage would be reacting just like uh, the character in the show, whereas a character like uh, Shao Kahn would, Omni -Man. would, or yeah, it would just be like whatever. And then you have a, you have a unique one, a unique one for Homelander, where he's like. He's he's pissed that his kill was stolen. This was his glorious moment, and it was stolen by this little pissant who doesn't know his place. <laughs> and it's like choosing up like he would in the show. He would call him fat too, because he likes calling A Train fat. So oh yeah, that yes. that, that's up. really. I don't know why it's so funny. <laughs> it's a very serious moment too. But yeah. Oh wait, wait hey, uh, have you seen the boys? Uh, Br. Just, just yeah, I've sure. seen the season one of the boys. Okay. So okay. I, I I know I know like the death and all of that stuff, but yeah, I haven't gone beyond that. Behind. Um, I don't know if this is like spoilers, but you know where I left off, where it's like you find out that like that the the uh, the wife had like a son with Homelander, or whatever. That's like yeah, pretty yeah. much where yeah. I ended. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. so you got spoiled that Homelander calls Atrin fat. We apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a thing that will happen later on. <laughs> I burn uh, a lot of calories. Fat. We used I don't to. Know what that makes me so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it's, it's, it's so funny because like they have like impossible beauty standards. Yeah, 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 literally. It's it's one of those commentaries on that on that mm -hmm. sense. Uh, but, but, um, before, yeah, before we so carry it's on. a good thing Mavado is a cameo though, and not a main fighter. Oh, go ahead, Snake. Before we carry on, can we take a quick break? Oh, yeah. sure. We will continue with Ermac and Mavado in about a couple minutes. And it's cool. easier for you guys if I just keep recording, right? So. Yes, yeah. I, I know you. I know you don't. You stop recording because you're afraid of like your systems or something like that. I'm a very superstitious person, and I always worry that like something terrible is going to happen. And if it did mess up, then we would lose like the hours we've already been recording. Oh, like like look, just now I didn't notice this. Uh, somehow I accidentally hovered over and right clicked on OBS earlier, and so it had the option to like close it or minimize it as an option. So if I had clicked Dude. enter or something, it would have totally ruined it for me. But yeah. yeah, I do enjoy That's our right. shenanigans that happen during these breaks, but I'm sadly not going to leave. What's up? Uh, you have to be saved by the Force Snake. The Force Snake is mm -hmm. recording all of us right now as a backup. So that's like that's the backup audio that we use to save our <laughs> recording. We did have an episode where True Underdog only recorded for like 30 minutes, and then the rest of like the two hours, just he never he never kept recording. So that episode was only 30 minutes. Oh no, I did fuck up.
I actually did. This isn't a me- this isn't a meme. I did fuck up. I did, I did actually <laughs> fuck up, Sna- um, Sonic. I'm sorry. I did actually fuck up. Uh, I've no been worries. recording my goes- audio. I never hit record on the camera. It was uh, glowing blue and red wait, already. Wait, 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 wait. Are on- you serious? Wait. Yeah, when you turn right on now? virtual camera. Yeah, I'm serious. When you turn on vo- virtual camera, oh. it shows the red dot. So I thought it was recording this whole time, but it wasn't. So I'm going to be a PNG. <laughs> no, no, uh, snake. Uh, well, wait, wait. Did you record your? So did you? What did you record just then? Like just the audio? I have the audio. Okay, Never that's the most ever. important. At least that's at least at least yeah. we can hear you. Um, yes. Snake will cover for you. I'm I'm, I'm assuming. But yeah, we can Does come back. Does Snake normally and record the entire screen? Oh. Because they're not. I'm, I'm probably just a PNG. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks, probably. <laughs> do me, do me a favor, Sonic, and at least do a cute PNG this time, not the stupid one where I look ugly. You, I hate it so you much. Send, you send me, a, send me a PNG, and I'll, I'll use that one for the rest of the episode. Whatever you want, basically. But, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna get some water, and I'll be right back too. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna see if there's a way to like recover lost footage in OBS. Hey, Snake, I gotta catch you up. So I, I dropped the ball <laughs> really bad. It turns out, I've been recording my audio. But I forgot to record the camera for myself, so I'm just going to be a PNG for most of this <laughs> podcast. Is this, is, this, is this a bit, or are you serious? No, I'm serious. Oh, you dumb motherfucker. So the question is, Snake, do you record the entire screen, or do you just record yourself? Just me. Yeah, well, I'm going to be a PNG. I'm going to be a little VTuber <laughs> the entire time. What if I send Sonic, like, different emotions, like like a surprised one? And an angry one, and like a sad one, and a happy one, and a neutral, and have him swap between them based on my emotions. He has to create your rant sona, and the rant sona yeah, yeah. crosses his arms. <laughs> are you, yeah, like, like you're like, some like thirty year old who just obsesses over like kids' cartoons still, like that kind of guy. <laughs> this is my talking one. Here's he. And then one of them. Oh no, my pit stains. And then one of them's wearing a different outfit just for no reason. You don't you don't explain it, but it's just like this one is in a different outfit. And so every every oh, so man. often you you just you're, change clothes for no reason. You reminded me of a. Uh, you reminded me of um a funny thing that happened in my last video, not the last last, but the one before that. In one of my earlier videos, um, it goes from my current footage to the sponsor video, right? And I think I was wearing the same shirt during the sponsor video, which is like, that never happened. That's just lucky, right? But also, I didn't shave yet. So I go from just like this look to just really bearded for the sponsor video. <laughs> it's like I instantly summoned a beard. <laughs> and I just love Today's it. Today's sponsor. <laughs> He's just like the completionist my intro. <laughs> it does. It does raise my manliness, but it also makes you look older prematurely. And it's itchy. When it oh, gets yeah, too like big, when, my beard gets when itchy. I, like when I have, um, like... When I shave, I end up looking like 10 years younger. Mm-hmm. True. You get to time travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah BR, will never know, BR will never know the glory of getting to shave your entire beard and <laughs> getting younger. Uh, wait, no, but try... I, I do... Oh, yeah, well, you change your hair, though, probably. You probably change your hairstyle and look younger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you could like do a hairstyle. You could, like, I don't know, you could change up the hat. I think there's, like, a lot. I don't know. Guys, like, I feel like... They think they don't have a lot of fashion options, but they actually do have a lot more than they think they do. Mm. So, oh, yeah. hair I mean, alone, if you there's to, so much you, you could, can do. Yeah, you could style on everybody. You could just show up to like start recording videos in like a like a blazer and like a button down. Mm-hmm. That'll bring in a certain crowd. <laughs> True. Cool. True. <laughs> well, I, I did used to show my workout pics on Twitter, and some people were like, "You should wear tank tops and show the guns," and I'm like, "No." I'm gonna wear regular <laughs> shirts. <laughs> and follow my videos. I mean, like, I like snakes wearing a mask. Yeah, you just show the and like, here we go for snake. Up with this custom. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Dang! Oh, oh that makes dang. sense now. Oh, oh shit! It lights up. Wow! So oh cool. my you grab god! The hot egg. I'm very mature for my age. <laughs> I mean, that is pretty dope. You're gonna be the coolest guy at the rave, which people will be like, "You're too old for a rave." <laughs> True. You know. You'd be like. Dun's, dun's, no, that's, that's the that's first thing my sister said. <laughs> You're too old for a rave. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Uh, what I wanted to ask is, uh, did Chona Dog? Did you tell the Force Snake about bad news? I did. He thought I was doing a bit, also. And we right? had an idea I, though I, when you were gone. We we brainstormed a great idea. I'm going to send you several PNGs of different emotions. 
And if you want, you could swap to the PNG that fits like the tone of what I'm currently talking about. I, I remember before when you failed recording, I thought oh, about shit. doing that, and I'm just like, that's like so much effort for a two-hour video. Yeah, <laughs> but the I idea, have to compensate you for that one. Dog, I have to pay you for that much work. The idea of dog basically having like a a cartoon community rant sauna is so good. <laughs> 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 yeah, he spends half it with his arms crossed to look cool and angry and disappointed. <laughs> and Snake had the idea that for no, one wait, of the wait. PNGs, I should just change my outfit so it's just random and people are throwing off like, wait, why was he entirely different for that one emotion? Yeah, so whenever whenever, he, whenever he's worked up, he's, he's suddenly like shilling his comic. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was going to say was Trinidad is going to do like this pose in the thumbnail and it's going to be like defending Mortal Kombat 1's microtransaction or something like that. <laughs> that would have been such a good April Fool's. Oh my god. That would have been the, the, the pose. Wear, yeah, pull up your shirt. Just be like, the guns out. I mean, hey guys. It, it would have it been funny, dog, but I don't think you'll ever top my April Fool's joke. I mean, mine's just unbeatable. Oh, your April Fool is, is genuinely very... I, I watched your video twice because of how good it was. <laughs> My favorite part is that you paused it, and then you still went through with it. Like, ha, gotcha, April Fool's. The first person showed their feet in Mortal Kombat. I mean, you're like, <laughs> you, think, you think I actually am doing it? It is true. I think you just go with it. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I, mean, I was like, oh. I mean, that, that bit was kind of the foundation for the whole video. I've been waiting like 10 months to make it. Because if I made it literally any other day... <laughs> It wouldn't work. It has. It has to be April Fools, and that's the worst. It's like, oh, it's May. Oh, I have to wait till eleven months to make this video. Oh. <laughs> my buddy, <laughs> for um, so long. The, um, my friend who jump started all of this is so happy at how much it's spread into every Combat Kings episode, <laughs> and he's also very happy that you mentioned that in Deadly Alliance, it talks about. Um, Lee May's, Lee May's like, shoe size. size. Shoe size. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we, yeah. It actually tells you her shoe size. No, a canonical shoe size. Because he knew about that. He's like, oh yeah, I remember that. Like it totally says her shoe size. I think the one of my oh. favorite. He was like, wait, is that, that big or small? <laughs> like you didn't know like ladies' shoe sizes. Is, is, is that big? He's like, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things about like Snake's feet video is like at the very end of the video, you literally had like a graph of like showcasing the percentage of like the feet and the shoes and the open toes stuff. Like you, you really dedicated so much time. <laughs> and yeah, people, people are gonna think. I know it was supposed to be an April Fool's joke, but people are gonna think otherwise. <laughs> They're right? like, oh, he's into this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I had an idea for. Oh, sorry. I had an idea for a video, too, but I, I thought it was... It, it's dumb, but I thought it was really clever, but then, like, 50 other people did it, so I decided not to, but it was going to be, like, what Smash characters have canonically smashed tier lists. <laughs> like, I wanted to do oh, that. Nice. That's true. People have done that before already, yes. <laughs> so I was going to do that, the but first then I was one. like... You got to be the first one to do a tier list. It's always so satisfying Wait, yeah, to be the right. only one that had the gall to go there. Snake, Force Snake did make a video, like, that was last year, right? And it's, like, even, like, very similar thumbnail, which is, like, which character is canonically smashed. Uh, for MK, in, done Like, with the Mortal yeah. Kombat universe, yeah. Which, he low-key kind of stole from me, but I'll allow it, because mine was a slightly different topic. Mine was, who slept around the most? <laughs> and, <laughs> what was, and, like, obviously, be, I was like, it's probably Johnny Cage, but we don't have confirmation. But you would think the Hollywood celebrity ha has done it the most, but we don't have confirmation. And then I was like, ironically enough, it's Melina, but the funniest part is, it's not very much. It's mm. only like four people. And I'm like, <laughs> most people can't, can, you know, wouldn't consider that very high. <laughs> so Melina's still at a pretty low count, you know? Good for her. Well, good for it, her. The number, it, it number is increased if you consider her, like, chronological age in the second timeline because she does only come to life during the mk2 section so she's only like 20 so given that it's, it's, it's actually higher than you than it seems ah hmm. fair enough fair enough hmm. and then I, I, I can't wait for her cameo character man lena can't wait that's gonna be a fun <laughs> cameo it's just melina but it's a guy that's a, that's a nice that's a nice one <laughs> so um back to ermac and movado oh, so yeah. i noticed something cool about the ermac intro if y'all heard him talk mm -hmm. did y'all notice it too yeah. Well, well you I, talked I about it in, in the. Yeah. 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 You can um, hear like these tiny souls whispering while he's talking. So like, there's more than one voice during his intro. It's super sick. Like the the souls' voices are escaping. I like that. I love that tiny detail. The <laughs> the um that's how I do Ormax voice in the poker skits. Like I always have like, mm -hmm. we are many. You are but one. And I record another one. And be like. We are many, you are but one. Like that, basically. And overlap the voices. That's how I do it. And that's how that's how Melina did it in the Mortal Kombat 2021 movie, too, by the way. 
They got it from you. They, they learned it from you. <laughs> True icon. Um, what do you guys think of Ermac's design, though? Because like, I have mm. thoughts on that. Look, they gave him a mask, I'm so I'm happy. Say... As long as the mask was his gear, all is forgiven. Because that ugly He's face needed to be covered. Guys, it's all saved. We did it. We covered up that face. Woo! It's very funny that I say that, like, cover up your face, and they've done it. Everyone's celebrating. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that's literally Put a mask things. on. It's I like, know. oh my... I I, I got a couple hundred likes on, on Twitter just by saying mask. That was fun. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> I, think mask, some of, I think it was some of you guys liked it, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I, I commented yeah. on it, so I, re, I, I, gave, I, I just get character redeemed and stuff. Um, I, over, <laughs> overall, I still think like the, the general design, without the mask, is terrible. But even with the mask, it's kind of on the lower side of like my favorite Urbeck designs. Like, mm, yeah, that's true. Mm. Personally, They're like going for I, a I always brand like, new look. yeah, I always like the more mummified. Like MK9 Deception is like always my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. ah, man, that MK11 design that we never got. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely gave him. That's that's the sad part. If they just done that, it would have been a way better crowd pleaser than trying to give him something completely different. Yeah. Oh yeah. Though I do love the implication that when Quan Chi summoned and created Ermac, he had like clothing jutsu. He was like, close oh. spell, because like, it should just be a naked guy, right? Well, it's all a bunch of souls, but like, I no, mean, he's got close powers. I mean, it's the same with Sindel powers. when she got revived, right? She like, from Revenant to regular, it's like, oh, close change. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh, I see what you mean. I thought you were going to say like an MK9. I was like, no, she's definitely naked no, in that no, desert. Oh, you mean MK11, yeah. Gotcha. Let's talk about Aftermath. <laughs> with, with, um, <clears throat> my, my interpretation is that it's actually literally Jared's body, and that those like his mm -hmm. burial robes. Oh, cool. Fair enough. Ah. I, yeah, I mean, I'm down with it. Oh, I was oh, well, just gonna say. How I'm do you just, think, Br? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say, yeah. Like, I, I bet money though that the original plan was to have that symbol on his chest. So. Yeah, because like, mm -hmm. it was uh, cause that's where he had the amulet that uh, like you take in the crypt in MK11. So I was thinking, oh god, is it gonna be that? Like, it's like some item on his chest. Like, fortunately, no, it's the mask. But yeah, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, if it was literally. We're gonna do this. No, no, everyone hates the face. We need to cover it up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also so funny how they were self-aware enough to make sure in that little teaser that he was wearing the mask just so everyone yes. knows yes. like guys yeah. guys it's okay he's got the mask it's the gear so, so the, the question <laughs> if i was them is... i would have done it way sooner like the day after the reaction be like oh, guys look it's okay he's got so the, quest, he's got a mask. the question is now will his actual in-game renders have a mask as well uh, and then then the, un the unmasked is just an option or is that is they're going to keep it where all the renders oh. are going to be unmasked, so it's ugly canonically forever? <laughs> Don't know actually, because that's a good point. In story mode, he's a hundred percent maskless, like yeah. every single one mm -hmm. of his skins too. But like in this trailer, is like the first time we've ever seen him with a mask, so hard to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did show him up like that, so. Yeah. Also, like, since we're talking about his designs, like, here are his other two of the Order of Light and Order of Darkness designs. Still not... <laughs> Still not good. No. Worse, in my opinion. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like they didn't even try. Sorry. But, like, my it's goodness. Like, we have so many excellent Ermac designs in the past. Nope. Yeah. He got the rain treatment. He's completely different. He got the rain treatment. That default design, at least rain's good. But this one is just like, at least the default design is growing on me. Like when the first trailer came out, yeah. it was like, it felt so boring. At least now it's kind of like, mm. bit more like fresh red and like kind of cool. The pants kind of look cool. But it's still just like low tier mm. Mac design. <laughs> And it wouldn't matter if the DLC had like other costumes, like an MK11, but so far they don't. So it's kind of like, dang, we can't even, yeah. we can't even redeem it if it's bad, you know. But hey, you know what? All is forgiven if you do a brutality with Ermac, and one of his victory lines is "Yes!" Like in Deception. <laughs> I want that back. <laughs> his Deception oh. outfit is the best. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask Br, like, uh, what do you think about Takeda's current like uh, design in the DLC? Um, I think it's pretty solid. Um, okay. I like the Jap like the Japanese oni sort of look to it. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I was just gonna 
add to your to your last point about like all the costumes and stuff like my biggest problem right now with mk1 is the costume loadout like the fact that i oh, cannot yeah. choose my costumes and i have to like get the costumes separately for player two is insane yeah. like huge step it back. is my top problem with the game right now the, i'm making videos. you really are that character in um, arcade quest in tekken 8 who's like the pink haired girl and she's like isn't it so much fun to customize your characters i could spend all day in character creator which is fair that's no, not yeah, just like a that thing, literally but. is me no, it's, the uh like the, i'm trying to film footage for my videos and it's like okay i need to get like kenshi in the tuxedo and then this character in that costume or even like have the mirror match and i'm like Shit, I can't because the settings like when it's player two, it just turns to default, or I have to like now press like the favorites and stuff like that, and it's just like so annoying. It's like, mm -hmm. let me have presets or at least like let me choose the settings in the character roster and stuff like that. It's like, come on now. Right. <laughs> I just don't understand where it even came from because like this has never been an issue before. So it's like, who <laughs> who thought of this and said, yeah, this is we're gonna do this. Like, did no one mm -hmm. check this? Yeah. It's wild. Also, that it really that's... feels like. Uh... Go ahead. Uh, it's well that it took, you know, when you choose like uh, randomized options, it took until season four for them to finally make it that in invasions mode, it will you it will randomize each fight rather than when you select the character. Because it, it used to be if you mm -hmm. just select, you select your character, here's the costume you're going to use for that character until you leave the mode or change the character. But now it's every fight, and it's like, okay, mm. finally, I can get to right. see a variety of costumes. Most of them are dog shit, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> i do like that new molina one though but aside from that oh, oh, a lot yeah, of them are yeah. pretty bad yeah <laughs> and dark race. Like the your, your, one, uh... i'm sorry but snore what, what we just, i think three of us just talked <laughs> <laughs> oh i was saying like um the invasion costumes and the boss fights costumes are also pretty good for the most part but i was roasting yep. lee may saying i don't like her like titan costume that you unlock i was like snore I like that skin, but I would like it more if the headpiece was gone. Yeah, I think yeah, that the, the one little is little that one's piece. pretty whatever. I would say. <laughs> I think it only stands out because her order of light costume is so similar to her base costume. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's basically I the, it's the same, but she has like a little sash thing on her shoulder, and she's showing a midriff. That's really all. It's different. <laughs> so, mm. so you have this other costume. Like, showing well, that midriff. This, this this one's a different costume. I'll, I'll give it that. So it gets points for being not literally the same true like sub-zero's like order of light costume is i had to like check double yeah. check oh yeah yeah yeah. this is different mm. oh, oh yeah, yeah yeah how low is the bar <laughs> how low is the bar <laughs> so we have to be like hey at least it's different you know <laughs> at least it's slightly <laughs> different oh man that's how i felt about rain's outfit too like it is visually distinct if you actually look at it but when i first saw it i was like what's the difference here oh no hoodie Sash, gotcha. All right. Sash. <laughs> uh, it's not bad. Ken uh, Kenji has it's not bad. No, it's not. I'm just saying. I guess I don't have a knife for fashion. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Kenji's is quite similar too. Just one with sunglasses and a kind of different tuxedo. Who do you guys think got done dirtiest with the Order of Light and Darkness costume? Because it's hard to top Reptile for Order of Light. I reptile. Think. Yep. Reptile that's literally sure. the one I gotta think. Like. <laughs> yeah, being a Reptile like fan, I'm looking at that. We're like, like a solid snake sneaking suit. Like why? <laughs> <laughs> Power so... Rangers ass reptile. <laughs> like, come on now. That's what I yeah, thought. I don't too. like Shao Kahn. Like, I need his skull helmet. Ah, 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 uh, yeah. Ah, ah. My wait, wait, too. which one? Lord, order of Light or Order well, of Dark? Well, both. Neither have a helmet. One, one, one's Little Red Riding Hood, and the other one's like a guy in robes. But for some reason, like, yeah, right, I was thinking mostly of the Order of Light. But what, what, okay. why okay. did every single Titan decide, yeah, I'm going to give Shao Kahn horns? Why did they all decide that? Every <laughs> single one of them thought that was a good idea. Ever since MK11. <laughs> It's just something that they want to give him, I guess. I do find it funny that VR was so passionate about it because my friend had the exact same reaction. He's like, oh, I hate that costume. So I'm like, hey, guess what? I'm picking General Shao next match. Oh, how dare you? That's my character. And guess what else? What? I'm wearing the Order of Light costume. Oh! <laughs> He's like all offended. <laughs> like, how dare you? Disgusting. How to lose friends and alienate people. <laughs> <laughs> how to uh, lose a friend in seven days. I like order of light scorpion i think that one's not bad that one's kind of cool mm -hmm. it's got that ronin look to him it's like oh, that's, that's kind of nice order of light sindel is kind of weak but it's still better than her default that's the only reason why I yeah. is so garbage yeah but evil sindel actually is not bad I, I think that one's not a bad skin hmm. i like evil sindel a lot it's one of the best ones in the game yeah um yeah. i 
I like Order of Light Sub Zero a lot too, actually, just because I love the idea of Bihan being good in that timeline and saving the day. Uh, I'm trying happy. to find this one comic mm, that's I wrote a really fan wholesome. Fiction about that. <laughs> it's really there's this one I comic like it's a very short panel comic that's really like kind of like oh kind of touching. It's basically the Order of Light Bihan seeing like um, the current timelines like Kwai Liang and sees that he has the scar on his eye. He's like, "What happened to you?" And Kwai Liang's like, "No." Don't touch me or something like that. It's like, oh, oh it was me. <laughs> I baby. did it. I really want to find that comic again. It's very wholesome. <laughs> for me, though, for the ninjas, like, I just need their, I maybe not a popular opinion, but I need their hair to be covered up. Like, it just, uh, it's just weird for me to see their hair out. So I'm like, all the outfits, like, I just need their hair to be covered up. <laughs> At least not for the me, default. You don't like Bihan's haircut, default. huh? That's interesting. I thought everyone liked Bihan's hair in MK1. Uh, I mean, like he's smoke? hot, but I'm just not used to it. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I just, like, it's the man bun, I think. Well, the, 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 thing the people, smoke's all uh, gives him the hoodie, right? The thing people so that's like, actually one good, good reason to go for that. The thing people like about Bihan's hair is the most is, like, cursed one is reptile coming down the front. Hoodie. Like, no. little, little wisp is like the one thing people, thing people like. No one cares about the man bun, like, because like, you got the little wisp, it's like, oh, that's hot. <laughs> he has the Clark Kent, yeah, little wisp in the front, yeah, exactly. Um... Oh, ju- ju- that's intentional too. He intentionally did that. That's the funny part. He's like, I want to look a little bit cute. Like pulls out one of the hair strands from the bun, like have him hang in the front. <laughs> I, 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 which is kind of funny if that you, like he, uh, Bihan is the one who's all about like um, control and order and that, but he's the one who's like letting it go a little bit instead of like being. Oh, it must be immaculately groomed and maintained. Whereas Kwai Liang, he's the one who's like, yeah, it's, it's perfect now. Well, I think I think I think Johnny got done dirty as well by by both, but Ooh. mainly Order of Light. Order of Darkness oh, yeah, is kind of cool though. Shirt. I do like the giant <laughs> yeah. coat. That's kind of nice. Order of Light is so boring. <laughs> That's one of those things where like they already gave him that outfit, and they didn't feel like making a Order of Light one, so that just became his Order of Light outfit. Uh, what is by the his? Way, uh... I didn't even... mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say like, what does the Johnny Cage Order of Light outfit look like? I actually don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll find it. I can have send you, it have you seen his default <laughs> render? It's, it's one funny of the because worst costumes it's his in all default on the site. But like, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me just find that. I got, I got a good one. I think it might be my favorite order of light costume. It's also because it's also plays a part in the story. Katanas. Like it's like okay, there's there's a theming <laughs> with this too, and it's like um, mm-hmm. it's actually kind of a cute skin too, with also different color yeah. palettes to make it look really good too. And it makes me happy because the original ending to Mortal Kombat 11, the good ending, I, I'm a sucker for romance. So I was like, I love this. They're finally together and they're happy and yay. Then it's like, that's not real. Get ready for <laughs> Aftermath. And I'm like, no, fuck you. It's, it's like, yeah, yeah you, you must choose. Uh, you, you can take this pill and you get your, your happy romance. Take this pill, you get Karitagawa Shang Tsung. Which way, um, Western man? <laughs> true, Which true. way, Western man? <laughs> I love that's that meme, uh, so that's his order of uh, <laughs> darkness, order of light, Johnny Cage, basically. Oh, dude, this is pathetic. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's so weak. And if you play invasions, that is the palette you get, basically, just this Johnny, and that's it. <laughs> ah, jeez. Yeah, I mean, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna grind for it, just because I gotta get all the cosmetics. But yeah, oh, uh, man, understandable. That one's, that one's bad. So oh. weak. It's also, it's also funny because. I don't know if it would have been better or worse because they also have the Ninja Mime costume in there. So would it have been better or worse to just have nin- a, a timeline where Ninja Mime is real and he shows up? Because he, I mean, he is there uh. as one of the characters alongside Janet. So you could have just had, here's the Order of Light version. It's just Ninja Mime. Like Johnny could be so good if they're like, well, here, here's just this timeline where Johnny plays a superhero. But this other timeline, he literally is that superhero. That's real. That happens. He plays... Uh, Green Lantern or something. <laughs> you just get these wacky costumes. Yep, yep. <laughs> That'd be a good meme. Just show a picture of Ninja Mime and it's like, when you're one of the most powerful warriors of Earth Realm, but they make you into a goofy side movie character in a different reality. <laughs> he's like Earth- all the wars I've fought, <laughs> he's all the times I've saved the realms. <laughs> he's Earth Realm's greatest champion, but he doesn't brag about it. And he's just there like, it's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I want to picture the director now, like, ranting about that. Do you have any idea how hard it was to keep Johnny Cage from talking on set? From talking <laughs> during scenes? <laughs> Fucking impossible. <laughs> I'm trying to find a Order of Darkness skin that I would consider the worst, but 
I don't think they're too bad. Like, there's not, they're not like amazing, but like, there's a lot of Order of Light ones that I'm just like, uh, it's or just not really liking. But Order of Darkness stuff is kind of all, at least the lowest is decent. I, I would think like the worst <laughs> is like, yeah, I can't really think of one on the top of my, maybe the Katana one, but even then, like, I want to see that more a bit to really decide on that one because that one's a bit of like a random one <laughs> for Katana, the Katana one. Well, I don't think any of them are bad. I think Baraka was kind of done dirty because they're all just kind of tunics or robes. Isn't Baraka the one the helmet, right? Yeah, but, but he's more like a normal tunic as well. I would have loved to see a version where it's like like the shirtless version where he's like full savage and he's like covered in blood and like, just really oh. amp up the beast nature. I see. I think it's okay. It's mm -hmm. like... Uh, yeah, I can't really think of one that really like offends me. Like, oh, like that's that's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, I, I was pretty offended by the Johnny Cage one. I'm, I'm just oh yeah, be yeah, 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 of course, <laughs> to totally. But wait, that's Order of Light. It's not, not even... Darkness. Order of Darkness is not bad in my opinion. The the giant the, like the, the Craven the Hunter one. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's pretty sick. No, I liked it. It's one of my faves. It's one of my favorite Johnny Cage outfits. And to be fair, like, um, Johnny Cage is one of those characters that, like, he's both easy and hard to design costumes for. Because you can just give him a nice suit, give him, like, regular, like, karate attire, and it works. If you try to go extra, though, it could end up kind of goofy. Like, I like his Deadly Alliance outfit now, but back in the day, I thought it was so stupid. I hated his Deadly Alliance default with the giant cow door knocker on his belt and stuff. I thought it was so stupid. Uh-huh. <laughs> so... It's a tight uh, rope. Yeah, I can't find. I, I just remembered a pretty good one, uh, and it left my mind. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I it was in my mind. I was like, I was about to say it. And I'm just like, the hell? It just, just <laughs> ran out. Like, I just saw it just then too. Where we, 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 to go? Where to go? Where to go? <laughs> Although, while you find that, I have a funny joke for BR. So I made this one time off. We weren't recording. I don't think when I made this joke. So if you look at Johnny Cage's belt, right? That that door knocker lion thing or whatever on yeah. his belt. So I joked that that moved in Mortal Kombat 1 and was given to Melina because it's on the side of her like hips for her default <laughs> outfit. She has She's the same the door giant door knockers. Oh yeah. my god. You're right. I can see it now. Oh my god. He's got king, like king, the king. little tassels. I forgot. He's got the little tassels hanging off too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember what I was going to say. What I was going to say was I do really like... Um, Scorpion's uh, Order of Darkness <laughs> skin. Yes. That that one actually is one that grows on me as time goes on. It's like, oh yeah, that does look pretty cool. Back to shit talking Ermac. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, oh, I yeah. have a his, his his light skin, his his Order of Light skin looks horrible. <laughs> Just looking oh. at her from here. <laughs> For some reason, nice I thought you were gonna say light ass. skin Riz. <laughs> what? <laughs> You said his light skin, but you meant order of light skin and, and changed it. But like, what's he gonna say light skin about? Like, what, what, what about Ermac's Racist. light skin? I think have white, boy, white boy Ermac. I think it'd be neat <laughs> if they gave him uh, a, uh, a mask option that just changes his face to Jared. They won't, but it'd be cool if they did. Yeah. It's kind of a well, small I'm thinking detail, he's gonna, though. Part of me is thinking he's gonna have a stance switch similar to what Shang Tsung Ooh. can do, oh. and he'll get King Jared moves. That's like my prediction. But I, I could Jared be completely and wrong. Have you, and Ermac. Do you know like, Mortal Kombat 1 story mode? Just, just making sure. Okay. okay. I mean, we so we've already, spo we've already spoiled, the, we spoiled the Order of Light and Darkness. No, no, no. no, no. Already, I, so. I played it when it first, first came out. <laughs> okay. so all Cause, cause I, I was like, being careful. like Don't spoil Sindel's death. But yeah, maybe even Sindel moves. That'd be kind of cool. They hey, better um, not give Ermac Sindel moves just because Sindel's already in the game. So there, there's no point. I mean, it'd be chameleon, you know. I'm, I'm just saying teeny bits. Just, just sprinkle a little bit. This is also... This isn't too big of a spoiler, but this Ermac we're playing is, like, after the story mode, too. Like, that's, right. like, yeah. uh, a thing, yeah. Yes. Um, Which explains why he talks the way he does instead of just being completely King Jared. Yeah. Yeah. The But, yeah, there's not much to go off for Ermac as of right now since we only just got a teaser of the intro. Ting! Ha, I'm Ermac! Ha, ha, bye! <laughs> Shoo, we are Ermac! Shoo, and that's it. Like, that's all we've seen like, right, as of right where we're recording right now, but maybe the trailer will be out mm -hmm. like two or three days from now. Uh, trailer be out two or three days from now, or do you think like he's going to be released a week from now? It'd be like, really funny the if the trailer came out right while we were recording. 
That would be very. That, would that, that be happens. Funny, Snake. That actually Don't happens. That we were, we were like, what, what episode we just started <laughs> talking about Peacemaker? Like, gee, NRS is so like not giving us any information about Peacemaker. It's been so long. NRS is so quiet. The moment we're done recording, Peacemaker trailer releases. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you can true. make this into a React podcast instead. We can all watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I have said multiple times we should try to do it live, but just a couple of times, like for funsies, and see how it goes. But yeah, um, I think I think oh, try to set that up someday. And I wanted to make this joke like a long time ago, and it's finally time. My time has finally come. So oh my gosh, the one good thing about Mavado not being a main character is I could definitely picture him having some kind of intro dialogue where it's like they clash right, and his opponent goes, "Haven't seen you in a while, Cabal." How dare you use my real name? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Because he has the oh sword. Oh my gosh. Oh, so they would merge so him. Because it did it Just with like Havoc and Dyro. Oh. Yeah, then he's like, he, yep. gets, he, gets his, of... he gets his burns and he's like, I am no longer Mavado. I am Cabal. <laughs> and it's like, dun, dun, oh, dun. No. Yeah, thank goodness that's not the case. Um, with that being said, though, what do you like? What do you guys think about Mavado? Mavado is like a giant question mark to me. Like, even mm-hmm. like, actually, his design is barely vis- visible too. It's like, it, it, okay, I see. Uh, it looks see, pretty uh, unchanged yep. from the old old one. Costume wise, I, I guess, I, 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 yeah. like a transition to MK One. I guess. I, I feel yeah. like in terms True. of that's it. The biggest uh, question is: Will he have like normal hook swords or those weird hook swords he had in the MKX comic that didn't even have hooks on, so they don't really qualify as hook swords? But that's <laughs> what they are, I guess. <laughs> Mm. they better be the hook swords because i'm picturing him like getting mix-ups like what cabal had in mk11 where one of his cameo moves like he comes out and hooks your ankle and like tosses you in the air or something yeah i could see him having a move like that that's the thing though it's like is he just gonna be cabal because that isn't that like the biggest like comparison with mavado and cabal well he's gotta have the bungee cables if they don't make use of those goofy goofy Mm, ass bungee cables then i'm gonna be mad because that was like his whole gimmick in deadly alliance that'd probably be a thing where you you summon him in and he cut and he uses it and like pulls himself back and he's just going further and further back Mm. then when you press the button again he launches himself and it's faster and stronger based on how far back he goes They that's better the bring fatali- back his stupid spiky shoes fatality, too. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's the fatality I kind of want to see. <laughs> yeah, where he has, like, no... Mo- I thought they were... Keep it with his no momentum to oh. it, you know, because instead of being, like, flying into it, like like Spider-Man, he's just, like, foot up, Shh. other foot up, and then slowly he flies into them. It's like, that's not how that works, but it's funny. Yeah. They could easily uh, just have him, like, s- jump backwards. Oh, you go ahead, yeah. Dog! Oh, sorry, I just... <laughs> she was next <laughs> sorry, in line, sorry, you sorry. can't jump the queue, s- dog! <laughs> I was just gonna say that, um, like design wise, I think he looks like the same as his default. But um, I'm surprised they didn't go the like the bandana and armor route, like with his with his alt. Um, but I'm kind of glad mm. they went down the black trench coat zone. I think like if he yeah. was like bandaning around with the black trench coat, like that would be pretty dope. Mm-hmm. Mm. The trench coat yeah. is his thing, basically. It's like okay, yeah. trench coat man, that's Mavado. <laughs> Indeed. I wonder if his bungee cable is going to somehow be used like with your main character too, like to give them new more mobility. That'd be kind of sick. Like maybe he does like he puts his arm around you ever so heroically, bungee cables like the ceiling and swings you like Spider Man. Oh, oh, you, you know, <laughs> I was thinking like moves. Batgirl you know, from Injustice actually. You know how you know that, that move <laughs> in Katana stance that Chameleon has where she launches you into the air. He does that, but yeah, he slingshots you with the cables. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be cute. It better make the dumb be sound dope. boing, boing, like it did in Deadly Alliance. It was so like goofy. It sounded like a cartoon rubber rope. Like, oh, 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 you don't. It was, it was it's so it's great because you don't see it, but when you beat Mavado in Conquest mode in Armageddon, it's described in the text afterwards how he uses that bun- that bungee cord to escape. <laughs> he just escapes doink, doink, with it doink, doink, from doink. from Taven before he dies. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I personally uh. hope he will be. Very different. Like I, I hope they don't go with the Man. easy route, which is just do do ca- do do cabal become a cameo fighter. You know, I, I hope mm-hmm. I hope they do like way more fun things like the bungee cool. jumping and, and stuff. Because I feel like mm-hmm. modern people might be like just see him be like, oh, that's that's a that's an echo fighter of cabal, right? That's basically, <laughs> that's basically it, right, guys? I mean, kind of. I, just, I didn't even recall until Snake brought it up that they changed his weapons to be distinct from cabals because he wasn't like dead <laughs> so they had to yeah. which, which is funny because funny. because the 
originally the Hook Swords were literally Cabal's. He, he stole them from him when he yes. nearly killed him. And then Cabal mm-hmm. comes and takes them mm-hmm. back. Uh, which, so I like to headcanon that uh, Cabal stole Mavado's coat as well, because he suddenly has the coat. Which is more, it's more because they <laughs> wanted him to have that coat in MK3, but technical limitations stopped them. So I wonder if that's why Mavado had it, because like, well, Cabal couldn't use it, so he can use it. And then end up Mavado, uh, Cabal rather has it in the next game. But uh, with the second timeline, is Cabal using the same hook swords as a, as a Revenant? Or, because Mavado could have just taken them from somewhere. He could just end up on the black market somewhere, then Mavado gets them. But no, he has to have a different yeah. weapon now. Hmm. <laughs> MK lore is silly. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Also retconned all the time. Mm. Like, oh, Shao Kahn's dead. Actually, he's not. Uh, Cabal's dead. Actually, no. No, he's not. Uh. <laughs> Scarlet is a being made with blood of the war- the blood of the warriors who've died in the war. Oh, no, she's just an orphan. That... That was Cabal, the most annoying one. Guy, like, I understand that right now nostalgia is at an all-time high for Mortal Kombat 11 because MK1 was not the game some people wanted, <laughs> but they are coping hard. I've seen some people like, well, Mortal Kombat 11 had a better story mode. I'm like, you you don't get to exist in this timeline. You're going to a different reality right now. You are broken. <laughs> I'm that's, sorry. Not, that's not a hot take, as you think, actually. So many people I hear oh. will say that. And I'm just like... MK11 <laughs> couldn't even keep its own stuff consistent. And it was the finale of the trilogy. And it still changed, like, so many things. that I made a full video about it. <laughs> anyway. I wanted to send like, a picture of, of the non-hook swords that Movado had. Because I had to be reminded of that. They're just, like, straight oh. swords now. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, yeah. Those are those are completely different weapons now. <laughs> they also made Movado kind of ugly, which is a sin. Because he's definitely supposed to be, like, really hot. But, oh, yeah. oh well. How dare they? <laughs> but yeah, not much to go off as of right now since the trailer's not out yet, but excited to see the yeah. gameplay, see what kind of things they spice up with Ermac. Because <laughs> like when Quan Chi came out, we weren't expecting tentacle portals and, and skeleton, like spooky spooky boys showing up from the ground. So see what they do with Ermac. I think there'll be ghosts. some old stuff, some new stuff. What? You'll summon ghosts. Um... <laughs> It'll be it'll be Kenji two point oh. That could be a thing, especially in the next game. Actually, if, if Sindel doesn't come back, um, that could just summon her soul to do a fatality. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be the way to put back oh, Sindel I, I, in the game, I, I, sort of. Like he summons Sindel's soul and she's doing the banshee scream on the enemy, like launching them back, and he's using telekinesis to pull them back in. So they've been like torn apart by two mm. fo- two equal opposite forces. Hmm. I want him to get really big again and step on him, like in MK9. Well, Jax, uh, so Jax, Jax does. Oh no, he shrunk them. <laughs> Jax yeah. already has that, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, he shrunk them. It was the, it was the opposite. But yeah. You get, you get <laughs> one step on them fatality per game. You don't you don't get two. Oh, I don't okay, know. Don't, I don't know. Snake with how much of the feet nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would be a back crazy for every move. Character. Yeah. <laughs> It would be a crazy move gimmick. It wouldn't really even make sense. But since, like, Ermac controls souls, imagine if for one of his moves he, like, shoves a soul inside the opponent's character and their move set completely changes to one of the existing characters and you got to figure <laughs> out who it is based on, like, their stance. <laughs> and you're stuck oh, that wow. way for, like, ten seconds. Oh, cool. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I thought you were just thinking, like, like a, like a fatality shoves a soul into the opponent, like a Shang Tsung kind of style stuff. But no, that that sounds. It'd be cool. Sounds... It shows like a hundred I mean, souls I mean, in them when they burst. I mean, it's not yeah. a Shang Tsung kind of style. <laughs> Shang Tsung literally did that in MK11 to murder them with Kintaro. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was saying. Or I mean, like Shang Tsung. So, br. You go <laughs> Do you remember uh, Liu Kang's fatality in Deception? Uh, is that the one where he? goes in their body and then he takes off their like head or something like that and then he's there somehow underneath it yeah imagine yeah. that but it's sindel which, like ermac throws Sha- sindel we- inside your body to revive her <laughs> <laughs> and, like she just pulls off the head Sh- 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 some ripped that one off in mk9 <laughs> and then they put it in battle yeah, of the yeah. realms yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. fair enough oh Shang that's Sung what i is want the stealer shang Tsung is the copycat Man don't got a single original idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, as of right now, we are going to be going into the next section, which is called the Four Snake Talks About the in- Intensive Lore of Onslaught, and we're just going to yes. sit here and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. are, are you caught up with the lore of Onslaught, BR? <laughs> just, just want to make uh, sure. 
I haven't played Onslaught. Um, I might, like, maybe I'll get to the Mortal Kombat 1 stuff. I think it's just, like, a Sub-Zero announcer pack. But, yeah, I mean, I haven't really touched it. Ah, okay. I don't know if Snake, you want to give, like, a TLD. And when I say TLD, <laughs> I mean, like... Oh, really that, 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 that's a tall could, order for you know, me. You know what I'm like. <laughs> that's what we did last episode. We I literally Snake had to like explain 30 minutes of lore before we yeah. got to the new stuff. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so there's been two new content drops uh, since the episode. There was the classic Sonya Chronicle. Uh, the Chronicles, little side stories for the post-launch characters that aren't, aren't part of the main timeline, so they could just do whatever. Uh, and then mm. there's also the new main chapter, which is Shinnok. We have to play Shinnok in a story mode for the first time ever. Uh, but and then we've also announced that the next Chronicle to actually release next uh, week is M1K Ashra. Ashra. Oh, okay. I like how you have to specify it's M1K's Ashra. It's like, oh yeah, like 3D era Ashra chance. Ooh, they're gonna add that <laughs> to the game. <laughs> Sonya, so it's M- MK3 Sonya. Sonya. Yep. Yeah, which, which is funny because her special move is a satellite laser, which you didn't have in MK3. <laughs> and the special moves are so strange in this game. Uh, <laughs> hey, about the, the healer. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, the, the premise of, the, of this this chronicle is very basic. It's uh, so Kano has uh, abducted Johnny Cage, and so the special forces are like, we have to save Johnny Cage, and Sonya's like, why? And, uh, and Jack's like, well, the, high, the higher ups just think it's a big deal, so we need to go and save Johnny Cage. And so Sonya goes off to save him, and so she goes to out, uh, after Kano in Outworld because he, he sold Johnny Cage to Sindel as a slave. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. And because uh, she wants him to fight, at least it's not like an MK11. It's not for breeding slaves. It's just to fight in the arena and die. So it's it's not it's mm, not true. that kind of slavery. It's not quite that bad. Oh, I did better. Uh, and then it turns I'm out... Getting, like... in, in the, yeah, in the MK11, it's still the arena, but there's that, like, breeding slave, like, both of them. So now it's just one of them. Okay. Yeah. And, and so then it's like, oh, well, Kano actually abducted Johnny after selling him to Sindel, and she doesn't know, so we can sell sell him to Quan Chi, because Quan Chi has a master plan to brainwash Johnny Cage and use him and his influence to, to like, take over and destroy Earthrealm's <laughs> defenses or something. No and way. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you have, to, you have to beat up Johnny and then beat up Quan Chi, and then Johnny's like freed from the mind control, and that's the end of the story. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's amazing that Quan Chi is going to try to use the power of TikTok to control like Earthrealm, basically. <laughs> it's, also, it's also just kind of funny because you I mean, like the next chronicle is Ashra. Who else is Ashra's boss going to be, other than Quan Chi? So it's like, it, it, again, it's like how Shang Tsung has been the last boss for like three of these. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's so strange. Uh, but so, so to try and summarize the story, um, so basically Shao Kahn and Shinnok are in this alliance because they have all these artifacts they want to obtain. The main like, story, the main yeah, story. Like Draman's oh. Mask. Draman's Mask is a powerful artifact. And if you get all of them, you, get, you, can, become the, you can get the power of an Elder God. And so uh, he, they're trying to get them. Scorpion betrays them because the mask just tells him, yeah, Qu- uh, like it makes a doppelganger of Scorpion that says, actually, Quan Chi killed your family. It wasn't Sub Zero. And, and Scorpion just goes with it, I guess. And so then he goes and tells Raiden about all this. And Raiden's like, okay, we'll, we'll get everyone together and go stop it. So then you just follow a, a succession of characters Johnny and Fujin go on a little adventure in Outworld. That's fun. Uh, that leads to Katana turned against Shao Kahn. And she gets the crown of Jared. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jax beats up Cabal in a cutscene, and Cabal's never seen again. <laughs> um, uh, and then he gets uh, a, the Veternus Bloodstone, uh, which Frost has been using to brainwash Katana and Kotal, because God forbid Katana go one game without getting mind controlled. Yep, uh, yep, yep. Then, then Jade's <laughs> chapter is about saving them. And you also Sub Zero's there at one point to help you out, and you beat up Frost. And Jade and Sub Zero have a fight over whether they should kill Frost or use it to get information. Uh, then this leads to Sonya's chapter, where she's the dumbest person in the game because she's tricked by Shang Tsung. He's <laughs> just like you know, all those artifacts in one place. Um, you know, it, it, it makes an aura of evil. It can manipulate people, make them go mad, which Sony's experienced. And he's like, maybe you should throw them all in the sea of blood. And Sony's like, yeah, I'm going to go beat up everybody. going to beat up the Shaolin and, and Katana and Kotal and Jax. Just alienate everybody, get all the artifacts, throw them in the sea of blood. Shang Tsung magically grabs them and just steals them for himself and Quan Chi. 
<laughs> Even though the sea of blood is bottomless, by the way. Well, well, so it, it, it does, before well, she well, throws it. Yeah, it's about to go in and it catches it with magic. And then, oh. so then, then Raiden, Shao Kahn, and Shinnok are like, yeah, this has gone to hell. We should team up. And it's like, ooh, yes, that's cool. Those three are going to team up. And then Shao Kahn's chapter, Raiden, is, Raiden and Shinnok are only in it right at the end. Because Shao Kahn's mm-hmm. just going around and like, the first time we see Nightwolf in this story, he's palling around with Shao Kahn at, at uh, Sonya's insistence. So they work together for a bit and then you, you get to the point, because everyone who was working for Shao Kahn and Shinnok have joined the Sorcerers, except for Melina and Sindel, who, Sindel's under mind control by Quan Chi and Melina was created by Shang Tsung, so they should be like the first people turned, <clears throat> but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were the heroes so Shao Kahn just obliterates the sorceress and then he says like, haha they were illusions we're gonna make oh. you our slave Shao Kahn haha <laughs> and then oh. we smash cut to the Elder Gods place where a laser comes down and just kills the Elder Gods and Raiden and Shinnok are like well damn that <laughs> didn't work out <laughs> The Elder Gods are dead in this part. timeline now. Already. Yeah. Oh my god. The Elder Gods is Wait, just. You, you, skipped, is, is... you skipped out on some important things, Snake. You skipped out on the fact that, what was it? Jade, Katana, Kodo are like working with Quan Chi yes. and stuff. They, they, like, they, a lot they, of the hero characters they, are they, working they, they, with Quan Chi because they they're afraid. Brow, of they got browbeaten. Yeah, they got browbeaten into working for those two. Uh, so this leads yeah. us to <laughs> where we begin with Raiden and Shinnok Da-da. working together. Don't ask the why. Team up. Don't ask why it's Dark Raiden. He's not Dark Raiden in the story. He's not in the game at all. But that's just what, what the, the artwork just consistently shows Dark Raiden. I don't know why. And so you fight the Shokan. I guess the plot was different at one point. You fight Goro. And then and then, then you go oh, to... Oh, the cyborgs. Yeah, so you go to um, the, the Wuxi Academy, which is under siege by the, the Cyber Lin Kuei, Including Cyber Sub-Zero. Frost just beat... At last, last we saw Frost, she was unconscious. Beat by Sub Zero. Two chapters later, oh yeah, she beat Sub Zero off screen and just turned him into Cyber Sub Zero. What oh my a hero. gosh! Wow. That's my girl. <laughs> Frost finally got a W. Holy shit! Have you Woo! seen what Cyber Sub Zero looks like in this game? It's so, it's so funny. It's pretty impressive. He, he looks like no. a, he looks like a Michael Bay Transformer. I'll, I'll find the image for you. I, I, it's basically imagine how MK11 robots looked and just. Like, imagine how Cyber Sub Zero will look in that style, mm-hmm. basically. Mm. Yeah. Because and BR, you might be wondering what's Raiden's reaction to watching his heroes, the Elder Gods, just die in one foul swoop? The answer is pretty underwhelming. He doesn't really react much at all. He's like, we are truly in dire times. <laughs> it's like, it's like, he doesn't really freak out. It's like, well, damn, he doesn't do what you think out. he would do, which is like fall to his knees and be like, what are we going to do now? Grabs Shinnok. What are we going to do now? <laughs> uh, and, 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 and Shinnok goes, Earthquake. get a hold of yourself. Get a hold the, the, of yourself. Yeah, he didn't like him all that much. He's like, whatever. <laughs> oh, Cetrion's gone. Thanks, God. Thank, thank you, Shang Tsung. <laughs> She's the first one to die. And they don't even get out of their chairs. Like, I don't know about oh, you guys, so but funny. I assume that those, I always assumed until Onslaught, I assumed that those giant, like, Ghostly looking figures were just like ho- like projections, like holograms or whatever, but in like you know magic form. Turns out that's just actually them, <laughs> which makes me laugh too, because we see Shinnok tasing them with his amulet during the intro of Onslaught, which yeah. is still funny to me because they're just in their chairs, <laughs> like no, ah, oh, the other one, no, don't tase me, ah. Oh. <laughs> but now we see him get lasered too, so that, that's the real them apparently. So then you fight the black right, dragon. So- that's quite fun. Oh wait, wait, hell yeah. What's up, BR? Oh, I was going to ask. So, like, I've gotten the whole story run down, and thank you. It sounds very convoluted and fucked up, honestly. Um, (laughs) But, so really, like, I feel like for me, I have so much PTSD from the Injustice mobile game. So, like, I'm always (laughs) kind of hesitant to play another mobile game. Mm. Are there any rewards for, like, MK1 besides, like, the Sub-Zero announcer pack? Like, do you get... Do you get like the dragon crystals or? You, d- you do yes. get a few dragon crystals, yeah. So. Specifically, 750 dragon crystals. Oh, okay. You level up, and each five levels, you get <laughs> 250 dragon crystals. And once you reach level 20, you get the Sub Zero announcer pack. And that's all the okay. rewards you can get for yeah. Mortal Kombat 1. So it's not even so enough. just play to level 20, and it's, you'll be good. It's not even enough dragon crystals Does that take a long for time? a new costume. <laughs> Um, I've heard it doesn't actually take very long, um, but let's let okay. hear what Snake says. Yeah, I, I think, I think That's it's a professional talk here. It's not too long. Um, it, it's relatively quick, I suppose. It's just one of the issues the game has is that you can't level characters by grinding, only by using gold. So you, you are somewhat limited in how much you can level the characters up per day. 
So mm. you, you can't oh, just you can't okay, just put them in you can't just put them in a random level and have them grind themselves. Unfortunately, other games let you do that, but not this one, sadly. I would assume it's within a week at least, right? Level twenty levels. Mm. Uh, I don't really remember how quickly it goes early. I mean, at this point, it's very it's, it takes a while, but. And, um, also, I wanted to say one thing, too. Even though the Onslaught story sounds very ridiculous, I do appreciate how they're doing things that would never fly in, like, a mainstream game. Like, the yeah. heroes and villains yeah. working together so often is pretty uh, yeah. interesting. Like I love Johnny how they and mix Shino. and match yeah. it. Johnny I'm very yeah, entertained the by the story as of right now, yeah. <laughs> it, it actually, Johnny looks cool with the black black jacket like that. Yeah, because it, all the designs... It is, it is canon, by the way, that Shinnok has constant anxiety whenever he's around Johnny Cage, because he knows... <laughs> Uh, like, he knows because like, all the designs are, are taken from MK11 most like this is ju- one of Johnny's outfits from 11 just recolored yeah so mm-hmm. sometimes I like I like the red so, sometimes they'll be the more they'll change it up a bit more than others sometimes it's just Liu Kang's story outfit with a different bandana not even not even different colours it's just exactly the same it's like that's terrible yeah. uh, <laughs> but like, there's, a, but there's a chapter here one of the parts here where, where Shinnok is one by one during the, the the siege from the Black Dragon, it's like you're working with Sonya, then with Jax, then with Johnny, then with then later on you, you work with Kung Lao, and like everyone gets a shot to work with Shinnok, which leads to a funny bit where Shinnok saves Sonya, and you just get the shot where it says, where Sonya's saying thanks Shinnok. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks, I think I saw you post that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. it's like She's you said honorable. that you thanks Obama basically. <laughs> uh, but like, the, the big thanks, de- the big development is. Oh no! The only way we can rival the sorcerer's power is to give Shinnok his amulet back. So we have to go. <gasps> so we have to go to the Temple da, of the da, Elements da. to get the, to get that back. And so they do, and then they get teleported randomly by uh, the sorcerers to Shang Tsung's island, and then they fight them. Yeah. Uh, and this is what brings us to the the closing cinematic because they have cinematics with MK11 Let's go assets. Do cinematic. Yeah. So this one, it's like they've. they've They've just fought the sorcerers and beaten them, and then Shang Tsung's palace. Ex- oh, I forgot to mention. When you get there, uh, Melina, Shao Kahn, and Sindel are all mind controlled, which basically just means they have like a well, green aura and green glowing eyes. Wait, wait, wait. So, so Sindel and Melina are bad guys in this chapter because they're mind controlled. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, good to know. <laughs> so, so, and then you beat Why them even? up. It's funny because you beat them up, and then afterwards, it's like, oh yeah, Shang Tsung's uh, palace explodes. And it's like, and it mentions how like Raiden and Shinnok and the sorcerers escape. No mention of Shao Kahn, Melina, and and Sindel. So I'm like, did they not make it out in time? Are they just unconscious? I'm sure they're fine. Yeah, I'm sure they're, they're fine. But like the, the cutscene is, it, the, the text even mentions for the transition how, uh, oh, everything's in ruins now because the palace exploded, which is I guess the excuse for why they can just use Shang Tsung's uh, island ruins, even though this is supposed to be like, around MK2 time frame. <laughs> but, so the two are trying to leave through that gate, you know, where like the um, the, the hanged monks <laughs> drop down. But then Quan Chi makes that uh, uh, that skull wall that he sometimes makes, and like yep, yep. and, and there's like oh shit, they've made a Quan Chi model for these cutscenes because he was in MK11, so they actually made a model for yep. this. And uh, wow. but, well, well, technically he was in MK11 as in the intro, right? So maybe they just used that model. They got to use that model somehow. Quan Chi. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was thinking of Shinnok. Yes. <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> yes. Dummy! <laughs> ah! Stupid! No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, dude, this, uh. this game, what I got from the story, it's just somebody's fan fiction <laughs> minus the ships and, like, the fucking. It's just, like, yeah. somebody's headcanon, they're going wild. Yeah. There's even uh, a cute fan fiction with um, Kwai Liang and Bi Han reuniting, but sadly it had the worst twist ever that Snake and I were not happy about. So. Oh, it's yeah. one of the yeah. chronicles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll get to that one in a minute because that that one's an amusing one. But um, so the, the, what happens is we see Quan Chi and uh, and uh, Shang Tsung and they're recolored. So now the, so they got all these artifacts like a, like a, a mask, like masks and like horns and stuff like that. But they're not wearing any of that stuff. It's just the normal designs in black and red. And Quan and Shang Tsung's hair is grey. That's it. Also, they've got glowing red eyes. And then, so then Raiden's like, well, I guess we've got no choice. He gives the amulet to Shinnok, and Shinnok blasts the two and takes the power. And then he turns <gasps> black and red. And then, uh, and, and then, he, then he's like, ha ha, Raiden, you dumb bitch. Seals him inside the amulet. So now oh. Raiden's out of action. And then he goes, ha ha, okay. Now you two are fools. Bye bye. And uh, blast the sorcerers. But when the smoke clears, they're still there. Because they're immortal now. <laughs> 
Oh god. They, they've lost Shinnok's oh, okay, power, but they're still immortal. immortal. They didn't do shit. And then, and then it's like, so now they and Shinnok are gonna fight, but we don't know who's who's gonna win. But I'm thinking, so is this gonna be that Shinnok wins, and then this whole thing with the sorcerers was just like, like a subplot a roundabout that we're just gonna get back to the main plot now that that's over with, or is something different going to happen? What do you mean main plot? What what else can they? Do? This is like a world ending situation. Well, because, there's going to be more after this. Because what was being reset. set? It was setting up Shinnok. It was setting up Shinnok and Shao Kahn as a threat. You you are a true NRS fan just by saying that. reset. Because <laughs> Shinnok and Shao Kahn were set up as the threat, so it's like, well, now things are taking an unexpected turn. The sorcerers are the main villains, okay? And then it's like, well, now we're just back on the Shinnok as the main villain train. But it's, it'll be interesting to yeah. see where that goes. Um, we still not had chapters for Kung Lao, Liu Kang, Raiden. Sub Zero's not had one, so I'm curious: Will Sub Zero stay Cyber Sub Zero, or is he going to get just turned back immediately? <laughs> Given Netherrealm's track record, I assume he's just going to show up and go, "Yeah, I'm Sub Zero again. It's fine." It's like, how did that happen? I got fixed. <laughs> I got better. Uh, Fujin, had the I got better. Jinsei Chamber. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. Also, so, <laughs> because a lot of the the, the stories done with these little text boxes, it just mentions. Oh yeah, during this battle, Sonya and Jax got mortally wounded, so we have to take them to the to uh, like that's where they go oh, to the no. Wushi Academy to get them in like um, like Jinsei waters so they can be cured. Ah, uh, it's the thing where you do shit off screen and oh, yeah. oh you lost off screen. <laughs> ah. Oh no. I think yeah. One really funny thing about the cutscene, like the only cutscene in that chapter, is basically Raiden says the thing. May the elder gods protect us. And Shinnok just says, "They cannot. They are dead." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like oh, it's like a parody. <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh, I'm just thinking, oh, the elder gods look up, walk after us, and it's like, Ra Raiden, you literally watched them explode with me. <laughs> you I'm, fool. I'm trying to like... think. Like, that sounds kind of badass from Shinnok's perspective, but it sounds so. It's like Raiden says that. It's like, of course, now Shinnok gets to say that line because you're an idiot, Raiden. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like well, you have that one fan Sonic that always makes the fan art. Um, you, they now need to make it a little cute comic strip where, like, Raiden says that, like, may the Elder Gods help us. And Shinnok just, like, puts his elbow on his shoulder, like, you only got me, buddy. Because <laughs> he's the only <laughs> Elder God still alive. You're yeah. only left with me. At, at least in MK11, Raiden had the restraint to say, may the Elder Gods... And he, like, stops himself from saying that because he knows the Elder Gods are dead in MK11. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I, I'm, so I'm thoroughly enjoying how batshit and weird this story is. There's a lot of weird things about it. Like, Frost makes the Cyber Link way. It's not even Cyber Frost, mm. it's just normal Frost. Yeah. Huh. She, she makes it. And Sector's Turns out not, she had a minor in engineering. Huh. Sector's not like even when here. She, when she majored in Lin Kuei's studies, she had a minor in engineering, so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's strange, but, but, but I, I, do, I do rather enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snake. Snake is like one of the only people that in the MK sphere that I know that we know that's like <laughs> constantly trying to understand the lore and like what's going on with the onslaught media. So it's always en very entertaining to listen to it from him. Nobody else is gonna really watch this type of content, so it's gotta be Snake who has to be the sacrifice. There's also some oddities. <laughs> like, well, like I'm still waiting the for the real hero. You want to put out there, so true, more power true. to you. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Ashra. Ashra is in, in, not available yet, but she's in the game. Oh, nice. you can see her model like that too. Oh, cool! Very cool. I gotta, cool. I gotta I like mention it. something. I don't know if Trinidad Dog was doing this, but every single time, it's like whenever Snakes puts up the um, iPad, <laughs> just me and Biro just do like <laughs> <laughs> every single time. Oh, oh, I should uh, check that out. Basically, no, I'm, I got oh, contact, so I'm okay Sub from back here. <laughs> which, which, which means quietly, I don't I'm know now. if Br knows about this character. But this character is unique to Onslaught. And when she first got revealed, oh, yeah. everybody was best, losing their best mind. Character. Amazing. She's the oh, hero we whoa. deserve. She will undo the Cyberlin Quay and rescue Bihan and take her rightful place as a main character. Yeah. Oh, there she is, there yes. she is. But the funny thing is, her, her, her face and mask are... Wait, wait, hang, 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 hang on a second. Her face. who do you think this is? Who do you think this is a very important character is in the Mortal Kombat lore? Who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, female Sub Zero, <laughs> Sub Zero sister. Oh, gender bent Sub Zero. Whoa, <laughs> Sub Zero sister. That's a cool one too. It's Hashtag funny. woke. If, if you look at a, <laughs> <laughs> if you look at a face and mask, it's literally just MK11 Katana. <laughs> it has used Katana's assets to make this character. <laughs> oh, and also they're messing with EBR oh. because she is no specific character. She's legit Lin Kuei henchman. 
Yeah, Crow that, that's all she is. She's called the Lin Kuei Crow, like, basically. I like her little skirt. I mean, I don't know <laughs> I mean, how she's <laughs> keeping warm under that, but it's Ice cute. Powers. She's got a it's little, a cute like, design. That's what she's yeah. design. That's what yeah. I think I read about. I read once that, like, legs have an easier time keeping temperature or something. That's why Lara Croft's wearing shorts in, in like, mountains makes sense or something. Like, you can do that, apparently. Well, that also explains the women where I live, then, because when it gets cold, they never miss a chance to show off their legs, even when it's really cold, so that, that makes sense. But I don't know what anime it's from, but someone did that great artwork, too, for this Lin Kuei girl, and it shows Sub-Zero being like, and all the Lin Kuei women shall wear skirts! Oh, that's... <laughs> uh, oh, like the Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, FMA, yeah. Oh, it's Reference. Full Metal, gotcha. That's what I thought oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya's interesting, because Tanya's not associated with Outworld in this. She's with the Netherrealm forces, like in MK4. Hmm. I, I guess I wanted to make up numbers, Ooh. so she just shows up and, and, and works for the bad guys in the Netherrealm. Oh, they, they also put in uh, I can't find your boy, arc. Mr. John Cena himself. Ah, hey. Yeah, he recently yes. just came in too. And he's one of the With best characters in the game. very blue eyes, like Snake pointed out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's oh, got yeah. like eagly on his shoulder. That's cute. Eagly. Okay, actually, select Peacemaker. I remember there's some cute, cute animation with uh, Peacemaker. Hmm. Not on this menu. Uh, I don't know how <laughs> to do it. <laughs> uh, fraud, fraud, you, and you say you're the onslaught uh, master. Uh, uh, I, I never said that. How dare you? <laughs> uh, but, but it, onslaught it, professional. It, especially the build is actually really cool. I, I didn't mention it last time because I didn't know exactly how it works. But it, it basically, he takes a, as well as activating his, spe his force field again, he also takes a shot with his pistol. And if you hit an enemy who has a status effect, you can fire again. And you can do it up to four times. If you get all four hits in, he does a sonic boom that hits everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he's so yeah, stupidly cool. overpowered. Oh shit! <laughs> so he's a better shot than Aaron Black, even. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, there, was, there was a time when Aaron Black was like super good in the meta, but now he's no one gives a shit about Aaron Black. <laughs> like, the meta, the onslaught meta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta hey, use listen. deception. <laughs> if Shrek Super Slam can have tech and meta, then so can Mortal Wait, Kombat I just, onslaught. I, I just thought of something kind of funny. So, so, um, Snake, you have a team of like four Kuai Liangs, right? Uh, yes. And there, there's now a fifth Kuai Liang in the is game. That, so... no, yeah, is, is, does that mean there's a fifth one now because it's yes. Cyber Sub Zero? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Five uh, Kuai Liangs. Uh, this Good. is Shadow Man Sanoop Saibot, who is one of the best healers in the game. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't find the artwork to show VR, but there was an awesome fan art of Lin Kuei Girl and Frost trying to fight each other in like a cute little chibi form and like sub zeros in between like no no ladies don't fight and they're like like wanted to like cat fight each other yeah. I, I, uh, I was trying cute. to find that too but i couldn't find it it's like i'm the it's best like, girl no i'm me. best girl. <laughs> there's enough of me to go around for everyone <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just funny because um uh that shadow man's a noob cyborg his special ability is he summons his shadow doppelganger out and it runs towards an ally and like splashes into them and heals them so it's like it's like <laughs> Behan is healing people with hugs shadow hugs yes like oh I, I can't he be, always I, had a sweetheart he's, he's like I can't be seen doing that oh no I, I, oh, I, I couldn't possibly be seen associated with hugs so he just sends out his doppelganger to do it for him <laughs> <laughs> they're just Sundetes just like all of the ninjas yeah <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so uh, on, the, be pretty hard to on, on the topic of uh, Bihan, here's uh, classic Sub Zero, which is Kuai okay. Liang. Uh, this, oh, it's weird. Okay. Yeah, it's weird because this is based on the M1K version. You can tell because he's got the, the the correct mask and his his colors are darker. So is but, that cameo fighter like Bihan? Yeah, I mean, Qua, uh, yeah. Sub Zero, but different color. Okay. Yeah, where, where Sonya is pulled from MK11 for her classic form, even though there's there is an MK3 design in. M1K, but whatever. Wait, wait, her, wait. MK3 Sonya is not from the MK1. No, it's, it's, it's from the face. You can tell it's the same one from uh, 11. MK11. Ah, I see. Um, but the, the thing with the, so the Sub Zero's Chronicle is, uh, he's he's just hanging out at the Link. Wait, wait, uh, hey, hey, hang on, hang on a second. Um, I think we can chat about this like. After we're done with the episode, since yeah, we yeah, about yeah, this one. yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, we, we're gonna keep chatting. Yeah, we, we, yeah. It, it, it's probably better not to go over it again for people who've watched the previous episodes and seen. <laughs> yeah, and, and with that being said, we have been going for three hours, so I do think. Oh shit! Have we? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's 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 how we do. We just chat a bunch, and I'm just, like, does that include the technical <laughs> issues at the start? 
I, hmm. well, I'll see what we've got. <laughs> we can go for another half hour, it's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, we, well, we did cover every topic, wanna, though, which is nice. Yeah, anything you guys want to, like, end this on or just, like, chat about, I would think it's totally fine if this. you want to, like... Oh, oh so whoa, that's, that's dope. Yeah, uh, you showed the Movado, uh, and I was thinking, yeah. like, was oh, the yeah. Movado on the original? Because <laughs> he had another one. Yeah, too. the the MK3 one. Uh, it's by the same person. Uh, a nether, a nether dimension in uh, on Etsy. Uh, does, does is he is he continuing now? Because I remember he stopped, right? So is he yeah, back? I, I, it, with certain select items, like I think the art, this one is sold out. It's also uh, signed on the bottom. Very neat. <gasps> Yo, that's cool. And, that's and, really and cool. It's really cool because you can choose which characters characters are on the tower. So I picked uh, take like major characters from Conquest. So it's like first you're fighting the Black Dragon, so Cabal. Then you go to the Lin Kuei head, uh, Temple and fight Sub Zero. Uh, then you then the Nether Realm stuff where you fight Havoc. Then the Red Dragon base. Then Raiden to represent the Outworld stuff. And then you go to Danny and fight Dagon and Blaze. So I, I made the so canonical basically the armor getting conquest bone. Yeah, well, like how with that one, it was like here's who Liu Kang would fight in MK3. Cool, cool. I like. Yeah, this that's a lot. dope. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you could like substitute whoever you wanted onto there, but but like so it, if it's off Etsy, then it's not like anything official, right? It's just like yeah, uh, it's, something, it's, it's, it's someone just, selling. It's a yeah. fan project. So, so but yes, you can breaking. choose who you want on there. Basically, if you wanted, you could probably have Behan fighting like everyone else and kicking their asses. <laughs> <laughs> you could also, like, I mean, I mean if you want to update it, I'm pretty I, I sure you mean just to, print it in, like, Angel Glue Stick and just put a new one on. I don't mean yeah, to try and, I don't mean like, to try and turn that into your whole personality, but it's... What? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I like Bihan, and I'm like, yes, that, that's your entire personality now. <laughs> Bihan girl, 75. Just four, just four Bihan stacked in a row, like, yes, this is, this is my arcade tower. Every, every single yeah, version yeah, of yeah. Bihan. That, that's me with Reptile, basically. This, this, every single Reptile, hell yeah. <laughs> I, I like I like Behan obviously, but like I actually from a gameplay perspective, I like Katana a lot more. Um, oh, I also okay. like yeah. look wise. So I just I just think Behan's hot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Ironically, because he's cold. Pato ping. <laughs> Got to bring back I'll, old I'll man of silver hair, Sub Zero, just for fun as an alternate. I have a new gun as well. I guess you can kind of do that. Some I miss his icy child. arms. I always liked when his arms were covered in ice. I thought that was so sick. That's cool. What's the... Oh, gosh. Oh, I made an actual click. Oh, yeah? Finish, Nate, finish don't you. get us. Oh, never mind. It was, it was a curse word last time. Not what? I have a what? katana behind me, but I don't think I can reach it. Also, I don't want y'all to see my sweatpants, so I'm going to stay <laughs> seated right here. <laughs> I guess I could I could update you guys on a very fun mm. lore. Since last episode, I opened these uh, skip, skibbity toilet like trading oh. cards. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's real <laughs> with, with uh, G-Man right that's what he's called I said Freeman like three times I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fraud Half-Life fan my bad guys but well I hear Skibbity Toilet actually inspired um, Half-Life you know they stole all the character models yeah it's like unbelievable how could they do this yep. stealing <laughs> But what I wanted to say was my brother is a elementary school teacher and so I like chatting with him about like what are the kids now into nowadays and so like a, a year or two ago everybody all the kids super into Demon Slayer they cannot shut up about Demon Slayer <laughs> they love that anime mm. but nowadays my brother had like explained saying like I don't really know what this is like something something like demon puppet shenanigans and I said like P poppy playtime yes they yep. like that that's a big okay. one right now <laughs> i got waterboarded with that the other day when i was like looking after someone's kids uh, <laughs> and, yeah and the funniest all thing is playhouse all skibbity toilet yeah yeah it's like digital circus poppy playtime garden bam bam among us to they should not know about digital circus that is very adult or oh well <laughs> no, i think i mean there's no swearing right so <laughs> I, I mean that, that's, I what the, that's what the kids are drawn not. to it was like, oh, here's the thing. Really like made for adults. Like, like Five Nights at Freddy's w was like about child murders, and kids were like, "This is amazing." So then it's like, "Oh, yeah, colorful, yeah, color ah, uh, robots, uh, uh, super, you're my superstar." Today, yeah. I, today I showed like my brother the Skibbity Toy like collection <laughs> cards that I have, and then he 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 was like, he made this big revelation. He's like, "Oh, that's where that's from." He he specifically said about the. Um, these two guys, the the radio, the radio robot, the st yeah. stereo robot guys, mm -hmm. and he says, 
my students were drawing that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he never knew where that came from. It's like, oh, well, congratulations. You now know <laughs> Skibbity lore. <laughs> I, I don't know how I, I watched, feel letting my letting a teacher all, know like, about this. I watched 40, 50 episodes back to back one day just because I was actually curious <laughs> about it. And I'll admit it, it is massive brain rot, but it's also interesting to watch like the back and forth because <laughs> it's, it's not every... It's not every part. Like you watch, like the, the the toilets just start to win, 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 and you're like, "How is anyone gonna bounce back from this?" Then that giant stereo dude shows up. You're like, "Wait, whoa! They're fighting back! Oh my gosh, they're winning!" And then like you have like a, a whole series for a bit of episodes where like the toilets are fucking on the run. Like they're losing big time. You barely even see them, and the the TV heads have won. And you're like, "Oh, interesting. This is a different perspective." So. Dude, taking out of context as someone who like doesn't know what you're talking about, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, stereo heads, yeah. TV toilets. It's, yep. it's better you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and to think it's all just a mix of a bunch of copyrighted stuff, and it still become like oh, its yeah. own thing. I believe the guy even gets mad if you try to like um, use his stuff or do your own version of Skippy Toilet. He's like, it's mine. It's my creation. And it's like, dude, it's all just stolen there assets. Was, <laughs> okay, stolen was song and. There was a small like copyright infringement like law that the the original creator did, and it's like, uh, you aren't winning this like at all. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> exactly. the funniest one that I thought was is like, is Skibbity Toilet? I think I think it was Map Hat. Is, is Skibbity Toilet lore related to like 9/11? Because you see the twin towers and like in there, and it's like, dude, that's <laughs> the Gmod God. map. Like, that, that's yeah. just there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Well, at least that's all it is. Oh wait, wait, what what do you got there, Snake? A prop phone. I thought that was real. Oh, I thought you I thought were actually like doing something, and you're gonna show us. That's what Snake has to use whenever oh, the girls want like to God, put their number in his phone. Oh my God! You're just waiting to do that. That's oh, hilarious. That cool. so you can actually shoot out from it. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Dude, that if you like were about to get robbed, you just pull that out. And just, like, <laughs> just like, no, you here have my phone. <laughs> 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 the I'm idea is that is on point. I'm gonna say no, you. <laughs> No, you. I have to yeah. exile your phone. <laughs> Snake like, can do that you, literal you, meme you, like, uh, <laughs> someone call the police, call the police, but not for me. Oh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> call, I, I, I just remember the, the meme of not the, because um, recently there was the um, I, Marvel Strikers, basically the Marvel Overwatch game that came out, and it's like mm. Bruce Banner shows up, that's it, pulls out the gamma gun. <laughs> It's like, oh, no, there's a Hulk mo- pulls yeah, out the gamma gun. It's just so great. It's like, please don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me yeah, when I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, it's like Fortnite with, like, the Avatar, the last airbender characters. You know, just like, Aang, just like, psh, psh, here's the AK. Oh, yeah. It's like, I'm out of mana, but I'm not out of, out of options. <laughs> I, 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 You've done it I now, love Kakarot. The, I, I love those You're Fortnite out of mana. Memes. They're going to kill you. And do the oh, yeah. do, do the gritty on your corpse. <laughs> I, I like this one. There's one someone did where it's, it's uh, Batman in Crime Alley, like on the spot where like, his mother's like uh, necklace beads are still there, and he's doing the default dance <laughs> where his oh, parents got shot. Oh, there's one where thought... it, there's, there's another good one where it's uh, a predator there. Slowly takes his mask off, roars at an alien. The alien just goes shotgun, <laughs> just blasts his ass. <laughs> did we? Did we all catch I, I, the uh, Invincible reference to Fortnite? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Have you both seen Invincible? Not yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then like be careful what you're about to say, Trona Dog, because yeah. I mean, Snake is it really? A, I mean, I'll, I'll hold off, but is it really a spoiler just to say they reference Fortnite? <laughs> that happens basically. Yes, there's a reference to Fortnite in Invincible. So I didn't even catch it the first time. I just thought, why did you do that? But then I'm like. Oh, it's pretty man funny, was though. actually in Fortnite for a bit. <laughs> I, I, know that's that's true. Funny. I know they had the bit where, where uh, they had to be careful with the Spider-Man issue where they had to replace it with like an OC. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which that's is sort such of a shame. when it happens. Such a shame. <laughs> but they, they did I do find Josh, it funny. I heard they got Josh Keaton to play him, though. They did. So <laughs> basically, it's just yeah. Spider-Man, but not Spider-Man, I mean, y- Young Justice did that as well, where it's like Black Spider is literally just what if Peter Parker was like an evil edgelord. So <laughs> yes. So so but basically, super case, saying if Josh like if I had a nickel for every time Josh played a knockoff Spider Man, I'd have two now. <laughs> it happened again. Yeah, but for the um, Young Justice one, it was actually special and a funny reference because that's the same guy that was making Young Justice. I mean, making Spectacular Spider Man, and it got canceled for like no uh. reason. So when he got Young Justice, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a middle finger reference. Like, hey, I still I'm still making awesome shows. <laughs> You can cancel my stuff, and I'll just switch to the opposite team. I'm on PC and, and then team young, now. And Young Justice got cancelled after season two. 
And then, yeah, well, then was... we got the weird phantoms thing. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> <sighs> That's the way. What were you saying about... The... Yeah, but to me, at least, like, even though they never got actual spider-man i think this is the next best thing it's like okay that's yeah that's cute <laughs> there's already <Hawk. laughs> there's already mods of the what do you call it agent spider like being put into the ps4 spider-man game just like that skin already in the game they're calling him agent <laughs> spider huh i thought his name was going to be arachnid or something because he has the a on his chest <laughs> i think it's agent spider at least they officially said that <laughs> oh damn they, they should put him in <laughs> um in fortnite next invincible drop <laughs> then he can then he can pile around with spider-man That'd be kind of cute. <laughs> it's like how it's like well, he's he a lot of crossovers in the actual comics, so it's kind of a shame they just can't do it now. It shows the um, how petty these companies have gotten. Yeah. Where it's like, no, nope, don't you dare use our character, not yeah, even they, for fifteen seconds. Nope, nope. Dog. So dog, say it's Disney. If Madam, if Madam Web couldn't get the actual Spider-Man in their movie, what do you think yeah. like Invincible could? <laughs> hey, we got something better. We got the oh, the, the better Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Invincible to maybe, hopefully, reference the Tick. Like, not a crossover awesome. that's like super well known, but like that. The what? The, the tick. tick. I actually don't know what that is. <laughs> the Tick uh, is also a like parody comics, superhero. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he had a cartoon. Yeah, he's point. a parody superhero comic that had um, a TV show for a bit, a little cartoon show, and it was like technically for kids, but there was tons of adult humor in it, so it's still fun to watch, like as an adult. And the tick is a giant parody of like, I guess technically Superman because he's a, uh, he's not invulnerable. He's nigh invulnerable, which implies you can hurt him, but like, <laughs> only when it's funny for the plot. Like, that uh, seems for like example, a funny you, superhero. Like, if you just Google the tick superhero, you'll see him. He's blue and yeah. he's like really tall and muscular, and he's very dumb. He's not him? intelligent like at all. Yeah. TV show. There is, and it's the guy who, who plays Crunk in the Emperor's New Groove. I love that actor so much, and he plays the tick. And, He's legendary. <laughs> yeah, you know it's different right away though, because in the adult live action version, he curses in like the first fifteen seconds. So they're letting you know right away that it's not for kids, <laughs> the live action one. So, I see. <laughs> but it's just a spoof. But him and Invincible, I didn't know happened. I I, I want to see that now. I want to read that. <laughs> yeah, what are the downsides? That happens to VR? They actually they actually interact. Yeah. No. Oh, it's sick. It's, uh, I gotta read it's that. like kind of in a it's in a comic. So, uh, yeah. So you kind of have to, you'd have to read that, like, just like, kind of like the Spider-Man, uh, like the Spider-Man Oh, fantastic. Comics. Yeah, I yeah. I heard there's a Spawn one as well. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, this panel is ridiculous. It probably never happened. What panel? What, what, what they should do is they there's should, a... um, they should replace uh, characters they can't use with, like, characters from The Boys or from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, what's Sorry, up? The we can't, that's true. They, are, they are like, we can't have Spider-Man. Well, Devora from Mortal Kombat shows up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be pretty dope. <laughs> that's actually kind of cool. That's a reference to, I think, something in season two, like similar mm -hmm. style with how they did that one fight. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can show that panel. It's quite. I don't know how, how friendly YouTube will be. So, because <laughs> I do show the images that are posted in our. And our server, for the most part, to give the lovely audience the context as to what's going on. Like, what mm -hmm. what horny thing did Trona Dog send this time? I gotta show it. <laughs> did I? No, I did not. Um, but basically, for anyone not aware, the writer of Invincible, like, he's just a big comic fan that, like, wanted to start his own comics. So it's really cool. It must be, like, his dream come true that he achieved the impossible. And his character is now collabing with all of his favorite, like, superheroes <laughs> from his childhood. Like, I want him to meet Spider-Man. I want him to meet Batman. I want him to meet the tick. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, I guess that's the sign that we need to start wrapping up if we're starting to talk about the tick. <laughs> I, I I'm curious how we even got here, actually. Yeah. I have an SVD dragon off. I'm very cool. Oh, we're that both, is cool. We're both going close to the monitor <laughs> <it> again. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, how <laughs> long is that? It's, it's crazy. Uh, oh my god, Snake, it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> You think that's big? You think that's big? Try to see how big this is. What the heck is? Whoa. Oh my god! It what? can't even oh, fit yeah. I am in the, the frame. Beards. <laughs> the that one is cool, piece though. is real. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any like Resident Evil things in there? Like props uh, and stuff like that? A bunch. I'm pretty. Uh, he he cosplayed as ooh. Leon in one episode. I'm like, there's like a treasure trove of like stuff back there it's all lit up in rainbow it's dope 
Oh yeah. Right? I love his lighting don't system. Don't fall, don't fall, don't it's really don't cool. Fall, don't fall. I've wanted to mostly, copy mostly it. Mostly before we start recording a podcast, he has to like take 10 minutes or something to like set everything up in the background Thank and you. stuff. It's always very cool. I got a Stars Police badge. Oh, oh cool. God. Oh, that's sick. If it will, if it will just focus. Focus. <laughs> focus, you a little more in the back. Stars. A little Is that back. like the actual like metal? Yes. Yep. Oh, it's dope. It's like shiny. It has, it has two pin bits for some reason, but yes. Oh, it's Stop. metal too. That's awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not like plastic. Then you have the little uh, little coins. For Resi three, Jill and Carlos. Oh, cool. Oh. I never know what to do with coins, and I get them in like collectors editions oh. and stuff. I'm like, what what do I do with this? But I, I, I could display them. <laughs> it's Nemesis. True, true. Ah. I think specifically a close up from that cutscene where he blows up the helicopter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting the glare right now. Yeah, it's right too reflective. It, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, Res the Resi 2 coin with uh, good old OG Leon and Claire. Uh. <laughs> you see the top of my head. Oh, okay, go, I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah. Cool, there cool. You oh, no. You're the, oh, you're the size of the uh, RPD logo. Nice. Hell yeah. Then there's. Uh, the keys. Oh. The RPD uh, keys. Oh my gosh, they're like the they're like the puzzle pieces. So that's why there's like. Yeah, the, you used to unlock the doors and then you toss them as soon as you're done with them. Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like you gotta ask yourself, why the heck is this in the police station? This 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 secret, like passage with all these like puzzles to unlock. And th to be fair, that's all over the Resident uh, Evil universe. So uh, who cares? <laughs> oh yeah, you'll do the yeah. top again. And in the what Resident happened? Evil universe. Dog. Why are you clapping Who's again? That? As an editor, I'm Unicorn. very concerned. Well, because remember earlier, I wasn't even recording. I thought I was. So I was technically not synced. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're clapping. Okay. It's kind of a late clap, though, but okay. <laughs> I'm going to escape the RPD with my medallions. Oh, cool. That's Yeah, That's those cool. are the medallions you put in. Leon, Let's you go. fool. You should have kept those. They're so cool. <laughs> Believe it or not, these aren't even from Etsy. These are official. It's just made in, in like low oh, numbers. Nice. That's dope. I, I have a shit ton of collector's editions, but uh, and they all come with like stuff like that. Honestly, <laughs> I do see your it's scorpion the, statue the... right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually got the. Thank I you. bought the statue separately. I didn't have the MKX uh, like collector's edition, so I never got like the DLC skin for it. But oh. I thought the statue looked dope, so I was just like, I'm putting it right here. Nice, nice. Dish, dish oh shit! You both have it. Hey, we're matching. <laughs> matching scorpions. Matching yeah. scorpions. It's very cute. Wait, but Snake, did you get the code though? Did you get the skin? Uh, well, because the version I play is on is on uh, PlayStation. <laughs> but when I got this, it was the I think it was the PC version, so <laughs> it wouldn't be able to use it. Well, I could use it on the PC, but I don't use MKX on PC. <laughs> it's a, it a neat costume. This. I wish they'd do more stuff like this. But I'll say that, but then the same people made that Liu Kang what, one, and it looks hideous. Yeah, didn't they do the Mortal Kombat one? Yeah, Mortal Kombat <laughs> yeah. one. The, the white Liu Kang. The, the, the one where he looks like he's about to start petitioning for Android rights, yeah. <laughs> I, not? I, have not I seen like the Liu Kang one, yeah. I have not seen anyone use that skin online yet, or, like, ever. So, it's yeah, a bit because, of shame, because it's a really... Because it's fucking hideous, that's why. Like, the statue looks yeah. cool, but in the game it just looks terrible. The statue does yeah. look very cool, yeah. Yeah, I don't like that whole stylized nonsense they do. I prefer just like a regular statue personally, but you know. Well, you guys kept sharing things. I'm very shocked none of you mentioned this like three hours ago, like my magnificent like cup. Oh, I didn't <gasps> notice. Uh, I'm going to yeah, be honest. I, I thought it was there. just um, because it's blue and white, like a lot of um, China, like fine China. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I only saw very the side of it. So I didn't uh, realize that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, when you have the two legs out like that, now I see it. Yeah, yeah, there we if go. You've been there we go. <laughs> my uh so no, so no, like oh, yeah. near my mom's like school had a flea market and basically uh -huh. someone just like sold these cups. This is like less than a dollar. Like seventy five nice. cents, basically. <laughs> okay. I have another one and you will see that in the next up. episode. Leon basically oh. like Leon's knife. Well Definitely first knife. off we got to thank our special guests for joining us on this episode of the podcast. And also, um, where can they find you? Where can they find your content, uh, Babe Ruthless? 
Um, I am on YouTube and Twitter, and I also have uh, Instagram where I put most of my cosplay shit on there. So, oh, nice. so oh, yeah, yeah, we didn't yeah, even mostly, mention mostly that. YouTube. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I've actually cosplayed. Uh, you mentioned uh, for Snake that you cosplayed Lena. I've cosplayed Ada, uh, her Resident Evil Four oh, version. Uh, but yeah, mostly nice. I'm on Babe Ruthless on YouTube, so they can find me there. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We are very bad at ending things usually. Um, Snake, pull out your phone. I'll pull out my fidget spinner. See this really <laughs> cute fidget spinner. It's an adorable Which fidget Babe spinner. Which Babe Ruthless is you? Is it Babe Ruthless official? Uh, oh, you're looking for mm-hmm. her Instagram. Yeah. Oh, my There's Instagram a lot of has Babe like Ruthless. it's like two underscores, and I can I can drop in the Discord chat after this. <laughs> I'm so yeah. cool. Look at me. It's a it's a fidget spinner. <laughs> oh fuck! What I the heck happened? Was, I forgot it was loaded and shot my monitor. Oh no! Well, this one's definitely oh, not you. This God. person's a redhead. <laughs> <laughs> the well, four snake destroyed his monitor, and that's how we end this. No shoot! <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. Well. <laughs> yep, well, that's the end of the episode. That's, in the- <laughs> that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> I like how you were the one who initiated that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> slapstick.